but so <clears throat> i think we have uh, some points that we want to go over but we'll keep it flexible sure. um so maybe just to start like uh, i know it's we recording on your channel but also to put on mine uh, just wanted to know a little bit about uh, your journey in the past and like um, now you are in uh, in canada and also you have been in the tech space for some time so yeah just a brief about how that's been and little bit about uh, youtube channel also if you can share yeah for sure so let me give you a quick introduction about myself so yeah you know my name i'm parth i've been i i did my bachelor's in india in computer science and then i came to canada to pursue my masters so i have been in canada for close to 10 years now uh, it's been pretty like journey filled with ups and downs lot of emotions lot of things i have learned and lot of things i have gained um i i worked in some good really good companies in canada like so first i got my huge break at a company called royal bank of canada it's the largest bank in canadian sector and i worked there for 5 years and uh, then i got a job at nokia where i stayed for like around 8 9 months and then i get a call from microsoft so i moved to microsoft stayed there for close to a year i was pretty happy and then i got hit with layoffs so i had to leave microsoft and then sort of uh once again i find some other role for short term contracting again got laid off and now i currently work at the largest like uh, movie theater chain in canada called cineplex as a solutions architect i started my career as a junior engineer and then i have worked my way through and many many things i have learned now the question is uh, how i started the youtube so actually youtube was a, a matter of fluke i never wanted to become a youtuber or anything like that and uh, the thing is earlier i mentioned that i used to work for rbc uh, so over there i was pretty comfortable 5 years in i was happy at the place i was doing good with my career and uh, like november 26th 2021 i found out that my wife was pregnant and she was pregnant with twins so finding a fang job has always been like a uh, sort of like a fantasy i wouldn't even say fantasy it was like a fetish because it's like the top 1% in the entire world best it company best engineers things like that so i knew what needed to be done i knew that i i have to put like dedicated 6 months to prepare for lead code and system design and do this and that but i never had the discipline to do that and uh, my wife suggested that hey instead of doing that why don't you just make a rule that uh, you would be solving two three lead code problems uh, every week and you would be posting those videos on youtube so that way you would stay committed and that's how youtube started so originally i had no intentions of doing anything over there and then one thing led to another i started making videos i started improving on making those videos as well eventually funny thing is that did led me to my job at microsoft because of uh, yeah youtube was a major factor in that and uh, yeah so i sort of achieved my dream that i wanted to and then the big question was should i continue the channel or should i not continue the channel and i realized that i actually started enjoying making these videos so i was like yeah hey hell not why not just make it as as long as i can and i just continued that yeah so that that's what the journey has been so far yeah that's great but especially like uh like how you got into microsoft and the difference between like luck and hard work thing so i'd encourage people to check out that video also uh, it's really yeah. nice Yeah, that's uh, a yeah the Microsoft story. It's it's a wild story. It's, it's yeah. unbelievable story. So, so uh, I'll just tell a little bit about myself. So I'm Kaushik. Uh, so I'm uh, Tamil, but I was born and raised in Kuwait in the Gulf, and uh, it was like CBS Indian school. And then for my engineering, I moved to back to India, and it was in Kerala. So it was in NIT Calicut. And then after that, uh, I got campus placement in Verizon. chennai i think you worked in chennai uh, like oh you got um, stuck for a bit uh, yeah you, okay. you you got a job in verizon then correct yeah so moved to uh, chennai for that and that was a software engineer role and was working there for around one and a half years and uh, so there was like around that time some kind of layoffs and outsourcing also that were happening and many teams moved to infosys so even my team was impacted many of us and so continued in the same like uh, role client and all but with infosys 
and then uh, sometime after that i moved to charge b and this time it was not purely development it was more of a customer facing role and it was related to data migrations and importing data into our systems so that was totally you know new learning for me interacting with customers cross functional collaborations and like uh, like having to mul manage multiple teams multiple parallel accounts and all uh, then later uh, like last year i've been wanting to switch back into development but last year started interviewing and uh, uh, after like a uh, bit of a break and like long gap finally like this year uh, i mean last month i was able to crack uh, as a senior software engineer in service now and i've joined uh, this week so that is a little bit about this and like in between this journey is when i met your i saw you i mean your youtube videos and that helped me so that's how all of this has come to pass <clears throat> yeah so i think uh, like you know we have uh, different things we wanted to uh, discuss as well um and like especially with, like with the current market and like different like things in india and all like uh, we can go through that so uh, maybe we, um, i can talk about like how the like for me especially with uh, me coming from studying in nit like tier one college and all how that has like been different for me you know uh, uh yeah uh, do you yeah i think you're on mute yeah yeah so basically mm -hmm. yeah you you have like a pretty interesting background uh you have studied in like sort of top tier one of the top tier colleges in india uh, i know that that plays a huge role with the campus placement so the first job you had was it part of the campus placement or you yeah yeah so it was part of the campus placement but okay. uh so the thing is um like you know how it is right like people they think about okay i need to get into iits and iits and they keep it as a target and then or after that they're like okay now i'm all set like that but it's not like that so i somehow got into uh you know nit this thing and i find out my batchmates are like the toppers of their states and all so and then i started feeling like okay i don't know anything whereas in school i used to be like uh one of the toppers are like you know good in this thing so that dramatically hit me and like even in college like my grades were not so high and also i was mostly seven pointer uh tried to reach eight never could sometimes uh, came to six and all out of the 10 cgpa so when the placements happen some of colleges we have this thing like uh if you sit for one company and you get placed you can't sit for another company on campus so uh yeah the placement season happened we are starting before anyone gets placed you're all like very hopeful all the big name companies come first and you also think you might get then you find out you don't get it and then slowly slowly the packages offered also comes down different companies come uh but i'd say i was like placed in some somewhat in mid cycle and it was like uh not too low but not one of the higher packages as well in verizon and uh yeah then like join the company that was fine but i would say uh, at that time i was sort of clueless about all of these interview processes and uh, i didn't have anyone to sort of like guide me in a proper way so i was from a, i did my ec but electronics and communication engineering but the thing is i was more interested in computer science i would have taken or opted for that before but a lot of uncles and aunties advised me ki beta take uh, EC, you can go to hardware or software. <laughs> I joined <laughs> college, and that is the biggest scam because I find out I found out that electronics has everything to do with semiconductors, and yeah. that chapter I skipped studying in twelfth physics. <laughs> so, <laughs> so finally, my break was in third third year or something when you can take your electives, you can choose. So I started taking more of like data structures type, logic design, more like software related uh, subjects, and like somehow like you know cleared stuff and all. So then finally, like, uh, like I knew I was get, like trying for software engineering only. And then every like summer vacation, you go home, all uncle and aunties are like, oh, beta, you didn't get core. I was like, no comments. I ruined four years because people told me this only. But yeah, so I was like very happy with software engineering, but I didn't know anything about like lead code, competitive programming and all. Whereas like people in CS and like others, they were actually doing it like, like I've just heard once about like uh, code forces hacker rank and all, but like had no clue. So even preparation wise, I was just going through some aptitude questions and like resume type thing. So it was like expected that yeah, I'll get only you know some standard this thing. So that's how I went in. Then uh, 
so these are sort of like some of the mistakes or things if i could go back and advise i would like you know uh, say on that uh, so even when the infosys shift happened i was around one and a half years experience and i thought that was too less to apply outside so okay. i was i never like put in the effort to okay update my resume prepare for interviews find out about this stuff but as more like okay no one will hire me it's too less experience maybe if i get more then only i can do and then i just like you know went on the same thing and moved to infosys and all and the work office was a little bit close is all pre covid right so but then like uh, i mean not going to different companies employee policies being not good and pay being not good and all but also this transitions also affected like my normal hike cycles and also if i was in the same company i could have get, gotten a better thing and this is not not also a jump it was more of a company moving thing okay uh, just uh, just uh, so uh, yeah. yeah going slightly back in in the yeah. in your college years when you are talking about uh, the nit times so yeah you mm-hmm. have been the personification of true rancho because you were you are placed in some other branch and then you started learning about computer branch so that's that's an amazing yeah. feat to achieve uh that truly goes to prove that you like i don't think that education has that much importance especially for computer science mm-hmm. anyone can learn programming anyone can learn coding if they are really yeah. dedicated into it so that that proves the point uh to be honest like you are being too humble with your grades and also you are being too humble with your uh, knowledge of being placed where uh, surrounded by people who are like state toppers and then of course it's uh, yeah it's it's always going to be the feeling of having that imposter syndrome uh, when mm-hmm. you are surrounded by such brilliant people but that actually brings out the best qualities in you that's what i i figured out yeah. and also the connections you make that you are all you are all surrounded by these smart people who are placed in different like good companies like someone might be in fang someone might be in like top tier company even mm. though you might not have placed placed in like the highest compensation package you know what other companies are paying around the experience i had was completely different like i mm. I, I made great friends at at my college but it was nowhere near top tier like i didn't even knew lead code until i finished my masters so you can imagine how 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 much of the difference that there lies in, right. in that regard uh the question question i wanted to check with you is uh at what point like you decided uh, that you really wants to go in in it and when you did jump to infosys what what kind of position was it was there like a coding heavy position was it on product side so maybe you can yeah, yeah. sure sure so um like little bit about like the nit advantages and some things like we'll also come to that i i also feel like i was able to leverage, leverage that only recently also because of this aspect of like humbleness and all so we'll come to that a little bit later on also but um uh the thing was even like um, like like you mentioned like um like i think there are two kinds of people we can give advice right like people who are in school or like like thinking how important it is like i'd say if you can as much as possible try to get into the tier one colleges one is the main thing is the brand value so that is going to stick with you not only in the your first company but even later they might not see ki okay how much percentage you got no one is going to care how much you got in 12th or where you studied but uh, what all you played or the sports i mean what all you represented like college plays a big part where you graduate the other thing is the people yeah i i think because it's it's like a filtering process you have like high achievers who come in and a lot of people like it's not like everyone is so good like people might have studied good in college school they come into college get into depression get start repeating batches don't finish many things happen but overall there is a lot of this positive thing and i'd say this is more of the thing it's not like the teachers are suddenly so much good here that teachers teach you so well and all that might not be there but like they are like very resourceful they'll give you that good connections and the people also and and you can either leverage it or you can like waste that time so i'd say like you have to make most out of your college experience all of that but also like you need to have think about like your career and what you can do for it and that would be like someone let's say in a tier one college something let's say someone who's listening who's not from like such a good college background like i'm still seeing a lot of people who are like working really good product based companies from universities that like to be honest i don't know the name of i've not heard it before but they have put that extra effort for self study for connecting and all and it is possible the main thing like i feel everywhere here it's not because people don't want to do it's like some luck or something they have not been introduced to all of this process so i think that's some of the 
that's one thing that you know we can help out like with whatever way we can like even like talking like this or talking to others like in person or also on on the internet and i think that will like overall help people and sort of level the playing field between like tier 1 tier 2 on all these colleges okay uh yeah so uh, again on your question on infosys so it was the same title software engineer uh but the thing is so when i was hired in verizon also i'm not sure how the team matching happened whether it's based on scores and all but like i had teammates who were working like very active projects like machine learning projects and like other these things and even active development uh building stuff there was some who were working on like salesforce side and then i joined a project where like a big uh, tech stack migration just got over so they are moving from some old i think jsp frameworks to some javascript frameworks and java and all and i joined after everything was done so basically i was only helping with some new update features or like maybe some bug fixes like that but it was sort of okay now when i moved to infosys in the same team i would not get like the active development work all the time right but in service based companies they need to show building and all so they will start putting me on like some random projects under the same senior okay. manager and it used to be like really bad at that time because i will get into some project where the code no one knows how to run it in their local system <laughs> the guy who deployed it in prod left like 4 5 years back and it's just running and they will tell go fix the security vulnerabilities on this and all so it used to be like quite bad uh, like it varies from team to team also but so i would be just like praying ki in my main project please give me work please give me work and when i get work i will tell my manager ki uh, i'm getting like uh, work here i cannot like spend more time here and then like he might leave me like that so it used to be like that and uh, like lot of people like in these companies it's there's not a big hiring bar also so some of them will be like uh, like if someone is like telling you something or like uh, giving you commands and all like i feel better when it's from someone who who i actually respect or who has the like merit also but sometimes it will be like from people who are just like senior to you because they're older to you and they might not know the content also like technology wise also and things so there used to be a little bit of that happening and so it was not like really good and then only i started looking out but the problem is uh, so from infosys to chatbi switch also i interviewed for few c- companies like which were software engineering type and they gave me like few like take home assignments but at that time i was thinking i want to do front end and all because i'm good in art and things like that but then like uh, the centering div itself is a big nightmare so i didn't like do anything properly in the assignments and yeah. i got this no, offer and yeah. i can by the way i can see the the proof oh, yeah. of your art <laughs> journey so it it looks pretty artistic so kudos on that the background looks <laughs> Thank like you. yeah so at that time i was little again clueless as thinking should i try switching to ux ui like that and all but all of this is happening in between i got this charge b offer also and those were more like scenario based questions and like like customer facing and like like so i'm i'm pretty like good in that uh, so talking to people and also like having proper organized structure uh, emailing and all of that so so the i got that and then i had three months notice like in so in india and in service based companies you get like three months notice and usually it's not even negotiable so uh, like so if you're in those kind of companies like once you're sure i'd say put your papers first then talk to your manager even if your manager is very sweet and kind because after you put the paper they won't be sweet and kind so and in some in product based companies it's like two two months and all and some good ones i've seen also one month uh, notice period and all but this two weeks notice like from usa that concept is like unheard in india that's what i was thinking about because over here if someone is being asked to serve one month of service period it would be brutal that why are you serving one month it should be two yeah. weeks right? yeah and in you know the funny thing is uh in especially north america in some cases when you ask when you say to your manager that i'm i want to change the job they will ask you that what is the company you get hired at if you want you can answer that you or you can deny yeah. decline to answer but they will ask that is that company a direct competitor so let's say i was working for yeah. a bank and if i got mm-hmm. a job at another bank i can just say that yeah I, uh, it's a competitor i would be relieved of my du- duties within like 2 days they're like yeah we will oh. pay you for f- 14 days we don't care but we no longer can have you you might do something bad i not you okay, are not right, right. That, but yeah mm. that, that's so if yeah, you do something really, bad yeah really lenient on 
Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. You can go. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah so that is uh, it was like big shock for me itself like coming from 2 months to 3 months yeah. so you can imagine like for people outside how bad it is so uh, yeah and that that uh, affects a lot of people so who are thinking about career change because a lot of companies when they hire you know even for 2 months they tell that no we need immediate joiners so when they hear 3 months and all they're like what are you saying like instant rejection so some folks they actually even if they don't have offer in hand they uh, quit put the notice period so in that, your yeah. case in your case mm. did you put your papers before you had a job so i put yeah before i put had my job wow okay in, so that yeah yeah you know that you are on a tight tight deadline tight window that you have to secure job by this date otherwise you so, are basically basically with right. not making any money correct correct so stuff. the thing is i had so, the yeah. same dilemma yeah when i was from infosys i wanted to change but at that time uh, like i consulted people and all they're like no don't do it don't do it like that and like at that time maybe it was good also i didn't do not sure but i didn't do it at that time uh, but like the last role i had to do it because uh, like because it's customer facing my timings are also like night shift and all so like even though team is like very good like people i worked with like very supportive it's the nature of work is also taking a toll on me and that was affecting my preparation journey and also like interviewing and stuff and so like uh, maybe we'll get to that but like i have like a checklist of like if you're going to quit what you should do or when you should do and also i had things like sorted in terms of uh, finances and all like that uh, but yeah that was a little bit of a leap of faith and hardest part was not telling people that currently you're not working and all but yeah Let's say, Maybe, let's say yeah, pretty, yeah. pretty ballsy, yeah. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, maybe we can discuss it now. So, so the uh, it was like I had started interviewing, but like nothing was like completed or like clicking thing. And uh, at that time, like I felt, especially since uh, in the previous career, at least it was sort of helping to my resume. But now it is not very actively development also. So in terms of paper, I have like key, okay, I'm earning like I am working thing. But other than that, in terms of let's say relevant knowledge, also does not improving as such. And like I mean, by God's grace, like my family, we don't have any EMIs or some things like that. So it was not like I know if I have some dependents and all, like I shouldn't be taking the risk. And if I don't have an emergency fund and all, but I had all of this, and I know that down the line, like once I get married, I can't take a risk like this also. And this might actually pay like uh, pay dividends before i you know get into marriage and also that is the reason and like made sure to like immediately i didn't do it also took some time and like spoke to a lot of people also and had like some backup options and stuff and then only like uh, you know took that decision so i'd advise same for people like like first like uh, try to not quit uh, don't do it but if it, unless it's like very bad like culture is bad something is like toxic something like that then make sure like arrange you have like some funds like some leeway of like 6 months at least to manage your expenses think how much you're actually spending right now and then are you able to do that and also have like some support system also because starting it's like fine then it gets very bad like uh, emotionally mentally also like it's not even the joblessness part but the the rejections and also we'll discuss that also yeah, yeah. i can no i can <clears throat> so i can actually very clearly talk about it um hmm. you mentioned you are uh, you are still not married you are young you yeah. obviously don't have kids i hope not <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the thing is my case was completely different i uh, i have a house that i have to pay the mortgage mm-hmm. I, i i have two young daughters so i had my twin daughters so they were just like one year old and when i lost my job at microsoft so microsoft was, was good enough they gave me like a decent severance and i had some time hmm. in between to find a job and the other thing is with microsoft i made like good contacts with folks i was working around they were also sympathetic that i had to let go so they were helping me out with like different referrals and different companies that they had contacts and uh, it was it was getting really convenient for me to find like continuous back to back interviews so that yeah. was yeah mm-hmm. that was that was still motivating but the thing is even with those opportunities i was and every time i was i used to make to the final round and then i would mm-hmm. get rejected so that that was so frustrating and the thing is it was at a point where i had all the responsibilities 
and uh, no job and i was just yeah. every single day that passes on uh, the pressure starts to looming on and then you start realizing that maybe today is the interview that i will be able to crack today is the day i will get the job and after like after about like 40 days i did got a job and uh, that job was yeah, it was a well paying job and it was a new work it was contracting so i had no experience in contracting uh, but i i took on the role uh, i had to go to a different province for that so mm-hmm. imagine it's like almost 4000 kilometers from the city where i currently live in so i okay. had to go there and live there for like couple of months and stuff like that and even from there i got laid off like my contract got ended right. before mm-hmm. the period yeah so okay. after 3 months once again i was back into the same place square one where i had to find the job once again and then once again i interviewed at bunch of different places and luckily and pretty like i was pretty happy to get a job at my current company because it's a movie theater chain and during the covid they also did not lay off people when they were like completely mm-hmm. shut down for 2 years so that that was good part and the other thing is one of my mentor at microsoft was actually like a very senior four person at this company so he referred me and then i had my interviews and then b- multiple rounds of interviews and what not so it all worked out so right now i can totally understand that how difficult it becomes when you are constantly applying for jobs and you are being rejected and the thing is many people don't realize that the most rejections like there there are always going to be two types of rejections so in our case since we have experience it's pretty convenient for us to get at least get that inter- go, those interviews yeah. get to yeah get our resume resumes. getting shortlisted like, yeah, yeah resumes are getting shortlisted recruiters are reaching out to us and we are basically uh find the interviews mm-hmm. i know many people who apply yeah. to like 300 jobs a day for like a continuous month and after a month they would be like yeah, i applied to 10000 jobs and i only get like two interviews and that mm. too did not lead anywhere okay. after like the yeah. initial mm. call so that that's that's a huge toll on some person yeah yeah so like i t- like i think you had mentioned that point before also so i think like we have some like unfair advantages let's say so one thing is for me like the nit card is there and like company wise also I have, at least in india these names are like uh, established names so like you also have that x microsoft thing so that credibility is there uh another thing that i've seen like even in terms of like when i was applying like i saw a lot of change happen after i started to make my resume ats friendly so that is something i think a lot of people are not doing um like because sometimes i see like resumes and all make it very colorful this design that and all but that doesn't help at all we are not going for a graphic designer job yeah. so uh just some of the points i'll just mention so main thing is like we know everyone has a lot of experience but make it one page resume so okay. people say like make it one or two page but like once i've done that like i've seen like most are novice make it one page uh and then remove like extra fluff don't add your like objective aspiring this thing that thing and all and just focus on like uh main bullet points your experience and all and try to not keep multiple columns so keep it like single uh, single column with like multiple things the straight forward like bland resumes you see on linkedin sometimes that's how we want it and okay. there are some of these tools so basically in companies they use these tools ats tools to uh, filter out your resumes before they come i mean like some human sees it and when the when someone sees it also if it is short and crisp then only they sort of like read through it also otherwise they just like don't bother so there were like some tools and all of them are like paid and all i've got one recommended called resumeworded.com uh so this one they allow you to do like i think five times you can check uh, for free after which you have to pay but i think after that i open uh used like so another what, account what's the yeah, re- resume word the word, resume worded, worded. resumeworded.com okay yeah let me just paste that link in the mm. chat so if anyone wants they can basically yeah check check this one out It might be helpful yeah here all right yeah, yeah. So, um yeah and the ats tools like it's application tracker tools basically application tracker software system. so oh yeah maybe yeah mm-hmm. yeah, yeah so that they are basically there so 
right now if you have link linkedin premium account you would realize that every single job that the moment it's posted within like two three hours it has like 500 applications so no human is going to have time to go through each one of those uh, those yeah. applications so that's why they use these tools to, to automatically shortlist like top 20 top 30 candidates so you want to make sure to improve your odds of making into do those top 30. so uh koshik if possible like do you mm -hmm. have your resume handy and would you just like to share the sc uh, sc screen if you can yeah like, if you have it yeah so yeah. maybe we can just yeah we can just do the, the that understanding like you know mm -hmm. the funny thing is i have actually written a book that is on amazon on how to write better okay. resumes oh nice no but but I, when i wrote it i wrote, chat gpt <laughs> had not <laughs> came so oh, now it's obsolete okay. it it makes no <laughs> sense like that book is useless mm -hmm. even i wouldn't read it now so it's it was long time back and it was just like something i was like yeah let me try i was trying to see how to put stuff on amazon so yeah, i yeah. just picked That's the topic good, yeah. yeah but yeah but yeah and also yeah uh use of ai to build your resume hmm. like chat gpt gemini yeah apart you can still use it to fine tune and curate it basically right so maybe yeah. i can show also because i've been in the post chat gpt resume building thing uh wait i'll also share my screen one second sure. okay perfect okay um okay um yeah okay i think full thing seen so okay so this is like my final resume after like uh editing and stuff so uh this website uh um resume word it it sort of gives you a score so like i was advised to get like about 90 and like i got 90 and then only so the thing is i just shifted my columns from i had like multiple columns and all side i had skills and these things uh but then like said telling like okay front end i have this thing i was like making very detailed very nice to look at and all but like if things are going to the system then it's you just play according system so just put all the skills whatever you can even some it's basically like a filtering process and if you can if you're thinking about fine-tuning for some specific roles then just add to the skill section you can keep the other stuff as it is add and remove if you need from this itself um so yeah so the main thing like if you see here some of the so the ats tool like i'll talk about resume about it it also tells you uh like what all you need to change what are some things which needs to improve and all so something that they tell is uh like your uh your dates it needs to be in the same format across so if you're going to say like uh like in numbers then keep it like numbers for the month everywhere if you're going to put like one mistake i had done was like i'd put everything like this and june alone like instead of three letters i put like four letters and all so like you need to keep it like standard across the board uh for that um date and stuff then the other thing they say is like all of your points some kind of quantifiable thing whenever possible you need to add so something like this month percent improver this much time saved this much revenue bought some things like that so uh do that and try to look at other people's resumes also and other people's linkedin profiles also to get a better idea so uh just like being yourself <clears throat> might not help so connecting with others like other people who also you know that who are working like good companies ask them to share their latest resume and they'll happily share because they already you know just spend time doing that um so that is helpful and i think like you know like later on also once working like more companies and all they say like only the top relevant ones recent ones put it other ones you can ignore it because you know if you have so many companies you may not be able to fit also um so yeah those kind of things i had other stuff also like hobbies like i had painting this thing and all the resume tool told don't put all of that yeah. so i removed it and uh i think yeah i was able to see like a good conversion after this so Try to put that another thing i was advised also is like if you're applying for roles in let's say bangalore even if you're not in bangalore put like bangalore address and because sometimes people see that and I'm like okay is this guy here only like he might be a better fit thing like after you go through the process later they won't be like no no you told you're in bangalore and all like usually it's like someone checking then someone else who's doing the interview follow-ups and also 
I think that's also one like uh, example. And try to keep some simple font. I think there are like few standard fonts. So use that instead of some very special fonts and keep the same thing across the board. And yeah, I think this will be helpful. Like actually one or two interviews, the one of the panel guys, like in their rounds, they've also told like, I want to thank you for keeping the resume so crisp. So it's really good. And also, yeah. Oh, that's... yeah. Of course, so the, the resume looks, looks pretty neat, pretty good. Mm you can get every single information that you want just by looking at it it's one page very concise very nicely done um honestly this is yeah for sure one of the better resumes that i've seen i've seen people with like less than a year experience with three page resumes so yeah this is <laughs> this is definitely yeah someone with like close to almost eight to ten years of experience and still mm. everything so concisely mentioned so this mm. This, this would be basically the first step if someone is trying to get yeah. into the job, right? That the number correct, one correct. thing that you, sh you should make sure is to spend spend time, spend effort, uh, go through some logs, go through some online tools, go through, use AI, use like see your senior experienced people to, uh, to make benefit of uh, creating like mm. a resume that increases your odds of getting the interviews. You can be like the smartest smartest person in the entire world, maybe like best in coding, but if you're not getting yeah, all you're not even that, getting yeah. what's, the, what's the point then? Yeah, so at yeah. least get, get your foot in the door. You know, one one more resource you like I can suggest, uh, there are actually a couple of good, very good subreddits. Uh, so one is oh. I think for resume review or resume building, something like that. It's a very popular subreddit. There are like lots of people okay. on that few mm -hmm. at least few hundred thousand people over there and they tend to be really harsh with their critique so if <laughs> yeah if you yeah if you don't know someone who is already who might be able to help that there are good and harsh people around the world who can really really yeah really help you improve your resume so definitely like uh just on that note so a little bit i want to touch on this also so a lot of people on linkedin they offer this service to have like one-on-one -on -one calls. So either through like top mate or they have like Calendly link something. And some people, they keep it free and some people, they make it paid. It's not made, like maybe some people do it to like get money from it. But I think like few people, they just do it to avoid like bots or like people just spamming and all. Yeah. Or like keeping some minimal amount. So even I like recently started, like I can share that later. But uh, so I've I've leveraged that a lot. So i found one person who was based in us who was a project manager kind and like you know the active in linkedin type uh person and like she had a like book a uh, free book slot kind of thing and this is especially early on in this interview journey like in september or october november type thing and so i was also thinking about should i think about project management line because a little bit of my last experience will be more relevant and all but i found out key like the type of role and the type of timeline expectations like some people like working okay this time to this time and then switch off do your other stuff some people like like okay not continuous work but they are available all the time especially like management and all so this was more of, about that and that kind and i didn't want to like go down that path so that this helped me sort of to realize like okay what's my so talking to people, it helps you realize, okay, what the trajectory is like, what the path is like to go there. And is that somewhere you want to end up? Because all this building you do and the ladder is in the wrong wall, it's like very bad. Like years are wasted, time is wasted. And sometimes you even go, it's like negative in your resume. So that helped. Uh, I had one engineering manager in my company itself who was taking a sabbatical. And he had put this thing like he's free to connect and all like that. So I spoke to him and like especially in the starting of my switch uh, time. And he suggested that uh, he can also do a resume review for me. So I sent my resume to him and like he had added comments and all and shared it back. So he removed the stuff like uh, I'm a peep, uh, I'm a hard team player, all of that extra. I had put words like that also. He told remove all of that. I had put, I think, my photo also. He told no photos, don't put your full address and all like that. So there are some things that you learn, like once you talk to people also. So there are a lot of people who do that on LinkedIn, uh, who open like free slots and all like that. Or like if you can get connected, if they have paid also, like if it's very less, you can probably, you know, pay for that and do. Or you can even talk to others who are like active and like ask them if they can have some, <clears throat> like, you know, a call or something. Like people will be happy to help out. So 
the main thing is like we need to leverage like maximum whatever we can uh yeah, yeah. be as be as resourceful as you can mm-hmm. uh yeah reach out to different yeah uh, and also if anyone wants yeah they can take the screenshot of this resume yeah, yeah. Uh, you can also provide me your top mate link and uh I'll, yeah i'll be put it in the description of this video so if anyone mm-hmm. wants to check it out yeah uh, hopefully they can they can also reach out yeah so yeah. this has been yeah just like a little bit on this in terms of um uh what do you say like ai being used chat gpt and all i think so the main thing was i try to look at uh so chat gpt is like really good at some things and some things maybe not that good like you feel like you're teaching some small kid who's not learning even if you tell 100 times you give the same output sometimes but like some of the things like uh okay i know these are some of the main points so the main thing is you need to give content so you can't just like automatically type thing it will just type some generic points for you so something related to what you did in your career try to talk to people you worked with in the past so i did that a lot i spoke to some of my mentors and ex colleagues and i because it's been a little bit break from like my active some development and all so i i was asking like okay which technology we used how did we what design patterns we used what did how did we structure things and that helped me to like remember things and also like to put things back into my resume also so try to do that try to get lot of content about what all you did in each thing and talk to other people reach out to people who worked in similar roles in your same company before see how they are putting their linkedin and their resume and then you can copy paste see, the thing is it's not like you're apply answering the same assignment that you shouldn't copy paste like you'd be applying to some very different companies they'll be applying somewhere else so it's like fine to copy paste especially to get like the points not that don't say something wrong like you'd have done some 80% something if you did only 20% like, don't course, change yeah. that yeah be authentic guy otherwise yeah. you will get yeah yeah like if caught is one thing like you'll get like screwed a lot in interview if you say something you yeah, don't exactly know the interview, yeah exactly interview for sure yeah they are mm-hmm. because they are, they yeah the more you are trying to hide something the yeah the high there is a high likelihood they are going mm. to be asking you more questions on that yeah, so, yeah this is really really good yeah and if you want yeah, yeah. Maybe you can and just uh, yeah uh, one thing about the skills also try to limit some of the things to like what you actually know and all like you can put a lot but don't please don't put anything you don't know anything about so like hibernate like in java we have like hibernate framework and also i have not worked on it and even my team they didn't use so but a lot of companies are asking that i think if i put that then it will become like problem for me in the interviews and also so think about those things also and like if something like you've used very little bit like uh there was something like i used graphql in like one of the hackathon things but it was very small small this thing and i don't consider like big re- experience so like put it accordingly whatever you worked on and all uh yeah i think that will be useful and like yeah even for mainly like use chat gpt to like rewrite sentences or get some different structures that way it will be useful and yeah. in case you're writing cover letter you can do that but i think maybe you don't need to spend too much yeah. time on cover letter yeah also i don't think like especially in north america not many companies ask for cover letters yeah, yeah. It's, it's something to be frowned upon why why do you need cover letter yeah so yeah so the, that's the thing no because when when you're doing don't do this stuff on your own when you do stuff on your own you keep thinking like hey, if i do cover letter then i'll get a nice advantage compared no. to other people and all but it's just like you you don't know the game and you're thinking like yeah, yeah. so okay um yeah totally we, so yeah yeah go ahead we talked about yeah so we talked about uh, number one uh how to deal with uh, uh, demotivating factors so rejection mm-hmm. not getting enough calls i think one important thing is to make better resumes what other yeah. tips would you suggest someone who is like sure, let's sure. say someone yeah how if they are looking for a job maybe someone with an experience or someone is completely fresh so what are what more things they can do to mm-hmm. improve their odds of getting those interviews right. yeah so uh, like we'll go through the as we have done the resume thing so that's good so now like if you've done this spend some time i would say if you already have some resume in handy like spend at least like two days proper to like sort this out properly and then start applying if you don't have any resume or it's like too bad like you might need a week or something but get that done first uh, after that it's uh, let's say the applying process and also 
in application like in any good company that i've got it's i had applied to referral so as much as possible please please do apply only through referrals only if you're not getting any referrals then only directly apply and i know it's like easy that you see a job posting and like hey i really want to apply this soon and like no one is responding anyway even if you refer right they give you a link and you have to sort of apply in the same format on the same page so you keep thinking that like anyway it's the same thing only what's going to be a big difference but i think it makes a difference a lot of uh, companies they've called back soon like when it's referrals and even late like only like good companies has been through referrals uh like even my last company job and even this one is through referrals now little bit i can talk about like my referrals how i go about that process so when i look at a company like my old i've also sort of limited my job search to like linkedin only there's like naukri indeed and other things like i've not spent my time here and there yeah so i think it's good to like stick to one and like the linkedin is showing good promise like currently so uh yeah just uh, choose like the type of roles you want so someone who's just starting out maybe sd1 sd2 something like that then like with more experience just how to find out what role you need to apply for look at people from your batch or like your uh, number of experience like from good colleges or whatever and then see like so for me i can apply to sd3 in some companies and like senior software engineers in some companies so do that and keep these keywords in your job search in linkedin and then start you know searching for that create job alerts and also you get to know you can put locations you want and then apply so once you get these uh, job uh, roles you can see on linkedin that uh, one thing is you can see skills so there'll be uh, some like five, seven out of 10 skills match something like that especially for this linkedin easy apply and all so what you can do is below the skills you can actually add the skills which are missing so try to get that uh, maximum skills aligned because like one of my friend told like he knew someone who was actually on the other side like using linkedin to hire and how linkedin gives the final pool is it also gives like a pagination view so it'll only give like top 20 or top 50 and it's going to give that based on how much match it is with the resume with the skills and like you know what is there in uh, his linkedin profile like that so as much as you can try to optimize your skills also and you know relevant experience number and all uh, then the other thing is in terms of applying. So what I do, uh, like in LinkedIn itself, it will show how many connections work in this company, then how many school alumni work in this company, and how many of your company people work or ex company people work there. So in that process, I actually like message and like I, I like write the standard thing like, hey glad. So what I do, yeah, like if it's someone I'm already connected, I'll I might know them. I'll tell like, hey, I'm looking at this role. So try to keep it concise, but like make the important points so say i saw this role and uh, it aligns with my let's say java experience something and i was wondering if you can refer me and try to so before i what i used to do which i don't recommend is i'll put a hi and be like would you be interested like that then two days later he will say like yeah give me a resume by that time, i'm not using linkedin or something like that so what you can do uh, in your first message itself like you say hi this thing and all and also include exact job IDs you're applying for. And many companies in the referral portal, you can they can just copy paste the job IDs. So don't worry that you're sending five or 10 job IDs. It's okay, just put it in the, send it to them. And then give your resume also. So minimize the back and forth conversation because uh, for you also the timeline is important and you don't know how fast they'll respond. The other thing is don't message one guy and be like, okay, if this guy doesn't reply, then I'll ask another friend or something. In the starting itself, tell, like at least to five people or how much you can you send the same thing and because you don't know like mostly the people active on linkedin is people are searching for a job or like who are trying to help people or in this space right otherwise only when you're searching for job people are active then later they're not active on linkedin so you don't know which type of person it is whether they'll respond and all so you try to do that uh and then like once they respond you get something you can tell the other person that i've already gotten a referral so that is fine so do this if you already have connection. If you don't have connection, you can send this personalized invites and all. But so I'm talking from a completely free standpoint. So no LinkedIn premium. So there's some limit to how many you can do, uh, like send personalized invite. And lot, not a lot of people can reply to that personalized invite. So I'd say just focus on sending connection requests, request to alumni group or like uh, work alumni group. and. Uh, once they accept your invitation because 
uh, before if you just send person invite, they'll be like, oh no, this guy is trying to get something from me like that. But if you just send connection request, they're also like, okay, it's okay, you know, I'm increasing my connection like that. So after that, you can just copy paste whatever you sent to the other person. Please change your name once or twice. I put some other person's name and told like, hey, Shweta to Sneha or something. And the person, the person replied, I'm not Shweta, but uh, actually I don't work in this company anymore. <laughs> So just be a little careful. Don't do it when you're like full sleepy and all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So once you do that, like people, like a lot of people reply and just think that it's all like a percentage game. So like if you tell like uh, some 20 people, only like five people might actually reply and like only two or three might actually refer. So more you can try to do that, uh, send to more people. And yeah, once you get referral, like once you get the email invite, uh, email link to like apply to places immediately do it. don't keep it like okay this weekend i'll do or like later just whatever you can push it out from your side so that is one thing uh the other thing is again numbers game uh point because uh like you mentioned like 300 like i like one of my friends was also recommending that you need to apply 100 jobs a day at least so because it's finally trickle trickling down numbers game and so there are ways to sort of speed this up so most of the job applications they use workday portal some variation of workday and uh, there only you'll have to fill in your experience put your resume write stuff and all and even though the workday the platform is the same every domain name like everyone has a different instance so you can't even like use the last used application and all it differs for each company so there is uh, one uh, chrome extension which i found very useful so it's called uh, simplify uh, I will share that across. Yeah, so simplify. It's a Chrome extension, and what it does is you can fill in your. Uh, I just put it in the yeah meet. So you can um, fill in your profile, put in like your upload your resume, fill in your experience, everything, and uh, like you know where you're located, phone number, all of these things. And uh, once you enter any page where it's like a career application thing, you can just click on the extension and it'll autofill all of the things for you. Maybe some things it might not feel like, uh, are you a veteran or something like that and all, but that you can manually fill, but it'll save you like few seconds in like a minute for one application, but that keeps compounding, right? So like overall, if you're applying for a lot of applications, this really speeds up the process. And so this has been like super useful for me and it does not just work day, even some other portals also, this greenhouse or some other things and all, it uh, helps with that. So try to get this also sorted and these are all like initially you spend like some half an hour to set up the extension but later on it's going to be like super smooth super breeze for you so try to get this also in check i'd say uh yeah so that would yeah go ahead. so that's actually a lot of good information that you have provided uh let me just do a quick recap uh hmm. to summarize that it's really important so number one thing is um it's a numbers game try to apply as many jobs as possible number two uh treat linkedin as your one of the main sources like you mm. if you want you can check out nokri and indeed like i personally i don't use anything else apart from linkedin yeah. as well same, I, same. I, yeah. yeah since last i don't know, since last mm. 10 years i only use linkedin for all the job applications that i've done so linkedin is your friend now for most uh the number one thing is cold applying is going to very rarely lead you towards job so this is uh, the awesome insight you provided of someone who who is actually a recruiter and who knows that what they see on their LinkedIn profile, which means mm. you need to make sure that the number of you are in like top 10% candidates, try to increase the number of skills uh, that you are seeing. So for that, try to add those skills. Now I know in LinkedIn, you, you are only allowed maybe like 50 or 100 skills. So, skills, don't, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so don't add like non-relevant yeah. skills. Yeah, like if you can be the best baseball player, but don't put it on LinkedIn for IT jobs. Yeah, it, I don't think it, it's going to be. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, yeah, exactly. I had to remove a lot of painting related <laughs> skills and all. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, so, do that. Next, uh, next your session was to try to find common people in your, uh, the folks who have worked at that company. Maybe they have previously worked at that company. Maybe someone from your connection has a connection working in that company. Reach out to those people. Don't worry about uh, sending personalized messages. Just send cold connects because yeah, everyone tries usually yeah. accepts that. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just send send one message, one long message with all the details that hey, 
my name yeah. is this uh this is what i'm doing i'm interested in your company for these job positions i have relevant mm -hmm. experience i think i might be a good fit and i would really yeah. appreciate if you can refer me to this position and maybe if you want you can also attach your resume on then and there we should yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so i think they will have all the information they need if they are going to uh, do the referral, referral if they are right. not going yeah. to do the referral at least you are not wasting the time like five days I back and forth that yeah. hi how are you mm -hmm. how is uh, yeah how was your day and whatnot so that is also a good good advice next i think yeah one really important so even i I'm glad to learn that simplify extension. I'm also going to install that because I have been yeah. through the pain of continuously applying to Workday. It's a mess. So just because out of frustration from Workday, I have I had actually dedicated three days of the week where I'm only going to apply on LinkedIn Easy Apply. Oh. <laughs> Not even going to go for anything else. If it's LinkedIn Easy, I'm applying for that job. And then I would have like weekends where I would find some more time. So I would go through the web, the mob, the web, web, and uh, fill out all those information. So I'm, I will try that out. So simplify mm. extension. I put that in the chat, and yeah. uh, okay, and I didn't miss anything, right? I think that that, that uh, was the yeah. Summary. Just wanted to yeah add on yeah. yeah little before we talked about tier one colleges and all, but let's get into yeah interviews thing. One more thing, just wanted to say like even simplify. Someone first recommended. I was like okay, I'll see, I'll see like that. Then second person recommended. Then I'm like okay, this is some legit thing. I need to do it soon. So it's a free extension you can do. They have some paid uh, features, but we don't need those. Yeah, uh, I mean yeah, if thing, you're going to, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. No. So like in terms of LinkedIn optimization. Like I have attended like so many of these free webinars, something or the other on LinkedIn and all. So I was seeing something posted by some recruiters from a company called Remote, and uh, they do a lot of async work, HR management thing. So they were telling also about like when recruiters see your profile, um, you can actually mention like where you're staying and all. So that also plays a part, and you can also tell what domain you're in. So if you are looking for jobs in let's say fintech, finance space or something, you can mention that also, or like software development like that, and that. Uh, really helps so try to maximum like fill up whatever you can in linkedin not just don't do bare minimum try to fill up more especially like people when recruiters reach out also they filter on based on this so they'll be like okay i'm looking in software development or in fintech someone as a C engineer something like that so optimize in those ways also sure do you do you want to do like a quick walkthrough of your linkedin profile i saw your profile yeah. it looked really good so <laughs> it would be good if like and you can also show what changes you made after mm. real after learning something new and uh, if someone is trying to create their linkedin profiles from scratch like learn these tips because this is literally like pure gold gold's worth of knowledge because it's it is going to increase your odds of getting those interviews and that's that's like the most important part yeah i think yeah i can let me just see if um okay i just want to see if linkedin is public thing i was just thinking if i need to redact anything um, yeah oh, oh of course yeah first do that yeah just make sure yeah you know, i've i've removed not getting uh, anything personal information yeah phone number or something so i just removed the contact thing in the right side so <laughs> that's i think the benefit of being software engineering to do these do that stuff yeah okay so yeah this is sort of my linkedin thing um yeah so what i was referring to yeah like profile and all if you can yeah please put it like as much as you can be like a real person it's like good instead of some bot uh, so right now i have the senior software engineer service nothing but when i was not what i put is so initially, I was also applying for a little bit customer facing roles. So that these roles like solutions engineering, implementation consultants and all. So they are like, let's say in some SaaS companies, when you are sort of onboarding customers to join your product, setting up something, setting up some integrations for you. So that was a little bit more of my experience like in my last company. So at that time, I put something like solutions slash migration slash software engineering, something like that, because I sort of opened all of those. Uh, but then I sort of... Uh, drill down on okay i only need to get into like a uh, software development uh uh kind of role so then i changed this to like senior software engineer now i got into service now so I just added that um then yeah over here there's like an open to work thing so you can put like software engineer 
senior software engineer for those kind of things and uh, yeah so like i had put like different places and all okay one second <clears throat> um yeah i think yeah in the okay it's called doxing or what <laughs> someone is message me telling nice to see you on live stream <laughs> <laughs> okay uh so yeah just put the type of role that you want to apply for and all and like yeah. locations also so that helps uh then yeah try to uh I mean, this is not very important but in case you're looking for recruiters to reach out to you you can do more stuff like reposting stuff or like sharing what you've been learning things like that that helps and also when you like same thing like how you started your youtube channel if you start teaching what you've been doing to others that also solidifies your learning so that kind of thing also you can do post like small snippets things you've learned and all and that will help you uh then you yeah, put uh relevant experience so the thing is i didn't put like what i did in each of these things because initially when i was applying i didn't want like my teammates to see that i'm actively updating my linkedin okay. uh but yeah maybe now i'll start putting because in future i don't think i can include all the companies in like one page so I'll keep this you know like the this thing stuff. is yeah actually on linkedin you can update the things and you can also mention that don't notify my network so it wouldn't notify uh, yeah yeah so, so, uh, not the notify thing but i think people come and see yeah, also. yeah oh, th this is not what yeah 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. and because yeah. unlike previous company like like my past past companies i know people here are like active also they're like liking and seeing stuff and all. okay so it's like so for me main thing was uh <laughs> it's like there's some phrase like uh, whatever happens in my life it's not been so bad that i had to put open to work uh linkedin uh, profile okay. this thing so uh because that like some people they put even when they're still in the company itself like sometimes workplace has been like bad and all but didn't come to that but yeah otherwise like yeah i did only undergrad so i just put like some of the courses and uh, yeah i got like some other referrals and all from people like shared referrals and got referrals and all but uh yeah that has been like i'm not sure how much value add it is but yeah that also you can just think about you know uh, yeah, some, sometimes they, yeah. they do actually uh play a good part and especially mm -hmm. if you are trying to apply for a company and they find like a common person who has actually given you a testimonial mm -hmm. or uh, given you some recommendation yeah. so yeah it, it really works in that favor so yeah this is this is really important information like, on how small just, things you can yeah like just on this no like do reach out to your people like uh, uh like because a lot of us we work like especially in india we would have worked with onshore like a lot of people and all but people don't like connect with them on linkedin and all but you can do that and like a lot of my referrals are also from like uh counterparts from the us and all like who i worked with and like i also like since i was in a customer facing role one thing i did is i sent request to all of the people i did successful migrations for and like a lot of them are also like connections on linkedin so just try to like unless you're doing something bad you can like shamelessly like reach out to people and like connect and also if you get something back it's good if you don't like it's nothing so i think yeah. that also we can sort of do oh no of course uh, absolutely <clears throat> i think you should be reaching out to people actively if don't mm. stay in your own bubble then you will you yeah. will still stay there so unless you reach out to people yeah it's it's not it's not going to be work out for you no there are like so many people looking for the same jobs so you need to make sure how can you how can you reach out build your network around around that mm. and uh, also like the other thing the other interesting thing i i personally did during initial days of my linkedin is like i think first like i had like one to 200 uh connects that were like legitimate people i knew but then i just started adding all the people who were like who were i was if i'm i was looking for a software developer position i would start adding people with like senior software developer roles software developer roles recruiters and uh different companies i was targeting and you know the the thing is when i started my youtube channel actually i started reaching out to a lot a lot of recruiters and just started cold messaging them that hey mm -hmm. i am really interested in i built a list of like 25 companies i reached out to every single recruiter i could find and okay. i started messaging those recruiters and i, I knew that because i i did not had much uh referral in those companies 
so the ones i had the referrals i i reached out to those, those people even during those cold messages i actually uh, i was able to secure like two three interviews with like yeah. amazon netflix and mm-hmm. yeah so it it worked out but then there was some issue with the location and stuff so mm-hmm. but at least that can also be one of the ways but good thing in my case is because i i had pre existing work experience and i had yeah, yeah, yeah. it's something to show so that that i i think if someone is like completely fresher i think they're just going to that it's very yeah. rare that the tutor would be actively ex- accepting those you need to uh, yeah you need to compensate in your skills coding and like yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. Pro- yeah uh just like uh since we are just showing the linkedin then i'll i'll just show you how the linkedin ec apply thing so you can click on your jobs uh, thing and this is how like you know jobs not show up so let's say that you know i was applying to uh, this position in microsoft so i would see that okay i'll just scroll down and see years of experience it's like matching java or i mean things are matching with my thing so here is this age skills match right so if you click on this it will let you add skills and here it says like these two are like not matching so i can go ahead and add it here and then like you know it's like more relevant for me and like here is where i would see like who are my connections first i'll apply to them and then like now because like i have worked in like different companies this number is high and school also it's like a big school so and this is microsoft so and the thing is like when you reach out for alumni or people to refer the good thing is like big companies like not just uh, microsoft but any big companies where they have entities in different countries you can reach out to someone in us also they have the same process for referring so it doesn't have to be that only in india you need to find someone to refer you even though you'll be working here so that is something like you know i'd also suggest so go through this process definitely yeah exactly i think i think every single company that i have seen they all mm-hmm. pretty much yeah don't care where the location location of refer employees are yeah anyone can anyone can refer to anyone so yeah if you find someone some common person who works there yeah for sure reach out to them uh add the skills and the thing is you uh also the other important thing is over here if you see on linkedin the jobs the one kaushik is showing right now if you see microsoft you need to go to microsoft office and uh, my microsoft site and apply for jobs uh as uh, meanwhile yeah. if you see some other ones below there is like linkedin easy apply so the you don't have any excuse on not to apply for these linkedin easy apply jobs if they are relevant to you it's just like couple of clicks and then you will directly be applying to those jobs so uh, and yeah just like that you just yeah. click couple of uh, buttons it automatically <laughs> shares your linkedin profile and this is like a 10 to 10 skill match so you know that there is a high likelihood of you you getting those calls back uh and the frustration comes when you actually have to go to the second website and then fill in all the information manually and in that scenario the the uh extension that you mentioned i would really love to check that out so it it would be yeah. definitely helpful in a lot of cases yeah yeah but yeah thanks thanks a lot for showing us uh, around the linkedin profile and how you mm-hmm. improved yeah how you updated your linkedin profile basically yeah and like i think like you mentioned even i have reached out to like different uh, uh like recruiters also and some of them they like i've done like through recruiters only they have done the thing but sometimes it's through a referral so both you can see uh but yeah recruiters might not do like referral thing you can just tell them i'm looking for a position and then they do it uh yeah okay so okay so a little bit we talked about like okay the applications and stuff maybe we can go into like the interview experience and formats and all yeah of course so uh you can talk about okay it would be good to understand uh, from interview's perspective and number one your interview experience when you were like basically placed in campus or maybe during the early days of your uh, mm. career that that's number one second can you also talk about like right now when you put in your papers you did not had work and you are actively reaching out to different companies and then you are trying to sync up those uh, interviews in line with also uh, active job uh till the next three months and then uh how do you navigate that how do you plan plan those out uh and what are sort of your strategies for like the first call with the recruiter or hr and then first call with the hiring manager your coding assessments and yeah yeah so like for me like uh the hr screen round and all always goes like fine like i can speak well and say and 
they are also not that technical so we can like escape through those but the technical round so i'll tell you how my experience has been because i like this time i've interviewed like across the board so service based companies startups product based companies and like like some higher end product based companies also so the thing is it's like very different it's not uh, one size fits all uh, and like that was like an eye opener for me because before i used to be like hey, like let me study first properly let me get some good level and then i'll start applying because i don't want to go and sit sit blank i'd say no you just only thing is your resume you work on that part because otherwise you won't get calls go to interview go sit there and just look at the screen think not knowing what to do that is the biggest motivator for you to study you tell you like i have sat in like two interviews where the person has asked me to reverse a linked list <laughs> i was just looking at the screen like this like this like this and all because at that point i hadn't done one lead code question also then later on i started studying and i was like what this is the easiest question in lead code okay before so, before we move further let me also yeah, i i have a very similar story uh, this was before my youtube days and my lead code days i actually i went for an interview uh, and they all they previously asked me that what languages do you are you comfortable with i was like yeah, i'm comfortable with java and uh, they gave me a que- question on printed on paper they gave me a computer that was not connected with the internet and they told me that their java is downloaded on this one and you have uh, the java 8 or java 10 documentation yeah. on that so whatever you want to search you can do that i looked at the question i was like what kind of question is this and i haven't done anything on lead code and i didn't know it wasn't relevant i sat there for 5 minutes and i was like okay i'm done and i just uh, because there was no one in the room as well the person just gave me the paper and he also left because he has, he had to do something i was like i sat there for 5 minutes i woke, i stood up i walked out and he was like this is the fastest someone has completed this problem i was like yeah you can go and check it out <laughs> i'm done <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that that yeah. day i felt that i i should definitely prepare more <laughs> right. on that yeah so i absolutely correct that you are never going to be ready unless you yeah exactly yeah <clears throat> and it's not like that company has like some offer and they're like okay wait i will wait for you when are you ready you know you just come we're waiting for you like very few companies are there like that uh, I, i think like in google you can ask for like long t- time to prepare before oh, yeah. you interview but that's like the exception it's not the norm and don't feel like and the thing is like so some company might be actively hiring in march but so you go apply whatever you see for now because some other company might come in april and like if you keep waiting that i'll achieve something some level and then only i'll go first of all you're not going to achieve and uh, motivating yourself without any like deadlines like uh, outside deadlines it's very hard self imposed deadlines as it's not easy to like you know stick to it and all so get interview scheduled after that you will do your studies like for sure and especially after you like yeah so interview process i'll come to that so the difference between like let's say uh, service based companies to start with that it's very weird like i am like i'm the same experience it's the same as me but the interview experience are so different in service based companies i've like at least two have had interviews they ask you to show your government id card in the starting and like they take a screenshot proof you have to show it with your face like this and all and then only they start with this thing uh, they won't turn on their video they'll tell us to turn on mandatorily and it's not a very pleasant experience let's say and then they ask questions so if it's like a very easy company thing they just verbally ask things don't ask you to write any code and all uh, so i was asked stuff like microservice architecture uh, something that so i was applying uh, back end roles java and uh, and they would be like okay what is like something uh, what frameworks you have used or like what is so this is the favorite thing like what is new in java 8 and like they ask you to like write code also in that so even though <laughs> have you used java first as like are you serious then i find out that it's actually no normal thing like uh, i don't know how it's in a broad lambda function yeah it's very common yeah. yeah lambda functions and uh, streams and all so then like after one or two interviews i learned what that means then he started <laughs> asking me to write it as like bro <laughs> so i have a pen and paper next to me always and <laughs> every time someone asks me question i'll be like mm-hmm. and just writing that 
I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. So that's the main thing. Every interview you go, you need to basically write down everything they're asking, and then you can focus your studies on those. So like that, it started going, and then I don't know how, but some of the rounds are actually started clearing also, uh, because I'm studying, and they have like very uh, common questions like, uh, is string immutable in Java? How is it immutable? That is like their favorite question. <laughs> and uh, so the thing is when i was blank like newly i literally went to the interviews and i was like i don't know i was like yeah i think because somewhere i saw common questions my string is immutable but then he asked me so if i change it still changing then i was like yeah it's changing <laughs> how is that so later on like learned about the string pool and all of that so there are like questions like there's some oops concepts and all and everything i've gone into interviewed uh, interviews and then like got screwed royally and then came back and understood it's like very fundamental stuff and all so that has been my journey like getting rejections in like the first level itself but then slowly like learning and then improving so the advantage i had was in college also i had taken data structures and like like actually from school like i've been good at computer science programming but then i had like a break with electronics and like not that much active learning so it was a little easier i wouldn't say easier but it was not like from someone full scratch shifting into programming it was more like i would keep getting memories so like oh yeah i used to write code like this before java comes like this and all so but then also learning from different things newly and all definitely uh like trees linguists and all never used in work but like learning for this so like that started learning and like it was like after some 10 years i'm actually having like pen and paper writing down things revising concepts before exam before interviews and it used to be sort of like appearing for like some online exam only so i was doing this then uh, in in like startups and like product based companies that they sort of switch more into lead code type things sometimes they ask also like some of them especially if their uh, uh, companies are heavy on like some technology let's say like here like walmart like mostly i've seen they're focused more on java so they drill down into java specifics like garbage collectors memory models and things like that also uh then like so that is there and then like dsa so like maybe the types of companies i have applied to but like it's more like easy to medium kind and they will ask you like like we know it's not just brute force thing you need to find out optimal solution and it's not about being smart it's about knowing the logics only so I feel like it is like some 10 standard, 12 standard maths because problem is given and there's like same pattern for different problems. But if you study those, keep doing a lot of problems, then you can sort of do that in the exam also. And it's like pretty similar here. And so for me, the main thing was, no, I was sort of clueless about all of this. So when I got all of this like roadmap was when I, my resume got shortlisted in Walmart. Then I was like, okay, that's nice. Then I spoke to like one of my batchmates was working there found out what all perks and how much salary they're offering and all then i was like okay this is like serious legit and then he told about like lead code system design design principles and all all the words i'm hearing for the first time i'm just like writing it down in my like notes and then he was like blind 75 then uh strivers sd then this thing that thing and also design gurus for uh, re uh for re refactoring guru right. for like design patterns yeah so okay. So all of those you're saying like a lot of brain overload, but then I got to know, okay, these are stuff they're asking. Then even in Java here, like told, like learn these things, especially multi-threading and all they focus on. Then they told about LLD, HLD. I'm like also nodding my head. Then I asked, so what is LLD actually full <laughs> form? So I was like that clueless, uh, especially like not sure there how it is, but here LLD is also more common for like, uh, like uh, our level of this thing. Then high level design, system design, like so, all of this, like honestly, I'm hearing first time in January in my life. So I had like some friends, others also who have done like stuff on YouTube who are like into this space and they used to post more about these things. I was like, what is this? Why are they wasting their time in this? Then I understood how much exponentially more <laughs> tech jobs pay, especially if you're like relevant in the industry and know what's happening and know how to like apply and all. Uh, so yeah, it was like big overload, but then like, like I had like some people also who had now I got to connect with my old batchmates and all who are working in this tech space. And they told like, yeah, bro, this is how it is. Lead code is the thing. DSA is the thing. And uh, after that is system design, like for our experience thing. So that's when I started. And before an interview, I was simply like, what language you want to use? I was like, I can do Java, JavaScript, Python like that. Even though I don't know anything because I lost touch. Then I started like thinking, huh, I'll use JavaScript. I don't need to worry about types and all. 
they started looking at solutions and there's like no solutions for javascript or like it's just like i don't know it's not very comfortable and then i saw like java it, i was able to understand it better and all but like most of the people online like who saw lead code they use python because it's like faster this thing and all but for me it's like learning from scratch i don't want to do and it's not relevant to my because again i'm interviewing for some i say java back end role they are okay with dsa doing in any language but then later next round they are asking on java so i was like might as well learn and practice in the same language so i stuck to java then i think like first youtube search itself like your video came up for like blind 75 so <laughs> that was like <laughs> super specific niche maybe but like very useful because like i didn't have roadmap blind 75 is most recommended thing yeah. and even though it's 75 it's a lot actually but like it is little bit reasonable as it's not like lead code 2003 the like that and yeah so that's how i started and like okay even with like the studying preparation i think i have like few tips i've learned so before i try to solve especially if you're new to lead code nothing you'll know to solve so immediately you'll be like okay look at the solutions like that but like one of my friend like recommended also don't do that set some time try to solve whatever you can some cases you do something you do and then park it uh, keep it aside and note down what what it is and then come back to it later in the day or next day and try to solve some other problem also so that way there's some gap also and you can also think about it and it's not like whenever i want something i just search it and get it so that has been helpful and you need to maintain some kind of tracker because one week later i you forget whatever you study like you think like ha huh, i know how to do Uh, largest increasing subsequence or all of those questions like even 3 days later you forget everything you may think like ha huh, maybe something along this line and then like you lose it so you need some kind of revision thing and there are like different templates to uh you can make some excel sheet google sheet and you can tell like okay last revise this here or i'm very comfortable with this this i'm not very comfortable i just learned it but i need to revise like that you need to have those and you need to based on the type like there are these road maps so try following that focus more on arrays and like dynamic programming also more and then maybe do like like linked list and like uh, trees and all but probably graphs towards the end or like there are only few companies who ask like that so try to see that and so that is one thing like do lead codes on your own um yeah so maybe I'm, there is like so much content i really want to share but uh, maybe it's not very like structured uh so in terms of dsa i would say like go ahead with this follow a road map continue your preparation time your uh, ex, uh like your solutions also set a timeline like okay uh 20 minutes i need and i need to do this within this because in interviews they are not looking at you they are also looking at how fast you're doing it because they are expecting to ask you three questions in one hour or two questions in one hour and if you are like stuck with first problem for like like the whole hour then that's not like a good experience so you need like speed also and uh, this is one thing and the other thing is you need to sort of practice mock interviews because when you are solving on your own in lead code it's very different from where, what happens when you do like in the interview so there is this a uh, uh, site uh, called tramp.com uh, it's quite common like in, in so what it does is it you can sh- choose slots where you want to interview and it will pair you with others who are also wanting to do mock interviews so you can choose between like how to do a dsa type interview or system design behavioral like that and it will pair you and it is like a uh, it is sort of like a lead code uh, shared id plus it has a video chat functionality also so it's sort of like a mock interview so let's say that i'm booking for tomorrow 9:30 i'm booking a slot and you also book at the same time so it will pair me with you and what will happen is i will get a email with a question that i need to ask you and you will get a question to ask me so with the solution so before the interview you can be prepared what to ask me and i can be prepared and the interview let's say it's one hour uh so first half hour i'll be doing it the uh, interview and then we can swap the roles so it is like benefit for both parties like we are taking interview also and we are getting a free interview also so if you do that success like do it complete it and like the guy is chill with you like you will be giving feedback so if the feedback is positive on you not that you solved it but like you're a good person like what will with an all then you get uh, allocated another free credit so you get five credits in starting so if you keep like doing like good interviews itself not bad then you can keep it's a rolling uh, type this thing so you can keep doing free interviews and it also um, at the end of the interview like in your feedback thing you can choose if the problem was hard or easy 
So it will increase your difficulty or reduce it. So the questions you always get will be sort of relevant to you. Don't be frustrated if you won't be asked like a graph question or something like that. Uh, so this helped me, yeah, a lot. That's actually pretty cool. I um, I know how important, like in my previous videos and also like some live streams I've done, I have paid utmost attention on like the fact that you you must do mock interviews. Uh, but I didn't knew about this website that it's a free to use tool. So yeah, I, I yeah. already pasted that link in the uh, live chat and I'll also put it in the description, but this is really helpful. Mm -hmm. So you're actually giving a lot of important resources. Let me just quickly do a recap of this yeah. segment of we talked about, uh, about like the type of interview roles, uh, like the type of interviews and uh, how, some of the important preparation strategy. Okay. So number one, uh, that's like your typical call with HR or typical call with recruiter. They are, yeah, they are very easy to go over because if they are calling you, you are guaranteed that you are at least getting that interview. It's only to make sure that you are, uh, you are also looking for a job. They are also looking for a person and uh, you are in the same city or whatever those logistics are, they work out. So you can, you can deal with that. Next thing is, uh, more than likely you have to do some sort of coding either it could be coding assessment or lead code problem or dsa problem uh some sort of that so for that uh number one thing you need to do is pick a language now i don't think any company is picky on what language you are going to use in those interviews because and many times they don't even care about syntax if you make some mistakes as long as you are uh, you are coming up to the solution, you have the correct thought process, you understand that what are the constraints and you can build up the solution, and drive that discussion forward in a timely manner. Um, in terms of languages, uh, I would like if I, uh, yeah, I have always been a Java guy as well, just like you. And uh, I also chose Java as all of the interviews that I've done so far, because I didn't want it to learn Python from scratch. If someone is starting completely fresh, I would say that, yeah, if you can go, go with Python as well. Python has a couple of good things to offer. Number one, it's, uh, it's less verbose compared to Java. So you can quickly write down the code and number two, it has great applications. If you ever wants to move in the future in data and AI field. So if you are starting yeah. from scratch, that can be one of the, uh, potential things that you can consider because Python is really popular and getting more and more popular with that regard. But apart from that, Java, C sharp, whatever you can, they are all be, they are all going to be acceptable in your interviews. And next in terms of uh, a lead code preparation. So uh, yeah, the important thing is not the number of questions you can do. Uh, there are 2000 problems on lead code and you're not going to solve all of them. And if you solve the 2001, you would have forgotten the fourth question. So yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not the fact about like just mugging up those questions, but to understanding that what are the data structures and what are the concepts and what is building that temperament and that thought process. So there are like around 20, I would say combination of data structures, coding patterns and algorithms. Uh, there are around like 20 of those. Uh, blind 75 is a great starting point because it contains like the most important problems, the most popular problems and yeah. covers most of the topics. So yeah, there, there is blind 75. There is also one more that is need code 150. So if you, if you are, uh, planning for like some tougher companies to crack companies, maybe like, uh, Facebook or Amazon, like I wouldn't say Amazon, but like Google, Facebook or yeah. Google, they are, yeah, because they are really tough to clear out. So. That is also one. Uh, I I let me share my screen just for yeah. a bit. I also created one <coughs> list uh, that I can show around. Let me just a second. Especially like this is also a positive point for like Python developers. Like like Neat Code is like fully in Python, so you like his direct resources and all will be in Python. But left. <clears throat> oh yeah, but no. By the way, I think Neat Code also has. Uh, all the resources in all the languages. Okay, uh, I think, but his his own tutorials, those videos are in. Oh yeah, Python. the videos are in Python. Yeah, the need code mm -hmm. videos are in Python. Yeah, uh, yeah his so are like, like, are yeah. in all the languages. Mm. Yeah. I think, but, especially very uh, initial stages. No, I think it's very good to watch because at some point you need to learn the basics of how a set works, how a hash map works. Yeah. 
because then you can okay i can also watch his videos and it's better for me learning because i can copy paste his code python code but if i learn i already know the basics of hash map and other things then i can exactly. see the intuition from there and like try to do yeah yeah exactly so yeah this is uh one list i created like back in the okay. day i okay. no longer have mm. the lead code premium subscription but i bought it okay. for a year so i thought mm. i would put a good use to it so i created okay, like okay. a list of 130 <laughs> questions based on different topics uh where i have provided that at what question uh how many times was it asked at which okay. company so and also i have uh, differentiated based on the topics so there Partners is like array, dynamic programming mm -hmm. graph and interval link list uh exactly. yeah most yeah for most of them i have the solution and also the level that whether it's easy medium or hard sure. So this is one list. A second uh, for Neat Code 150, I really like his list. Like he has mm. done pretty good. So now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to finish the Neat Code 150 for myself as well. Uh, so oh. that would be that would be in Java. And once this is done, yeah, I'm basically done with uh, data structure and algorithms. Then I would <laughs> then I would yeah. start focusing on maybe like uh, solutions uh, like cloud mm. solutions and uh, system designs. But yeah, so this is, I will all, let me also paste this in the description. So and, these uh, video links are your video links or like need code also? Uh, no, yeah. So no, these ones, I think, yeah, these are my channel. Uh, okay. pre before I had like some other channels of the videos that the popular questions that I hadn't mm -hmm. solved. So I put down, so if anyone wants to prepare, they can prepare using those links as well. And okay, now, okay. since I ma did made them, so I just put down my links uh, nice. on on that. So you have but, a, a bucket list also to complete. Yeah. So this keep this is actually I created this for my personal self. Yeah. So I know which question I'm doing because I don't mm. I didn't want to randomly pick some questions. This is very uh, useful the, actually. Like I yeah. think even I'm going to use this. Like it will yeah, be useful let for me. me. Share this one to you, and I'll also paste this in the uh, YouTube live so in the chat if anyone wants to go and check it out yeah so basically uh these and uh oh in that same link i did not show you one more thing that i'm trying to create okay. uh okay so this is i just started working on this yesterday so i have actually differentiated every single thing on all the questions that can be asked on like different topics okay so oh, okay in total there are like this is the combination of everything that could be asked in a DSA problem. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's like a coding pattern algorithm uh, or uh, data structure. So I want to create basically like a 2D matrix of all of this and then create like a graph like structure where say, is saying that, okay, if you are trying to prepare for arrays, you can you need to understand that with arrays, you might yeah. be working with hashing solution or two pointers, sliding window. Mm -hmm. Yeah or uh, trees or binary trees would not be relevant with array solution so because many times what happens is even when you are trying to understand these topics you don't realize that hey if i pick a, a problem that let's say the first one to some problem this is mm. an array problem but this is also a hashing problem so how right, do right. i understand that or many times you are trying to solve a dynamic pro programming problem and suddenly you realize that hey this is also a graph problem but i haven't studied graphs so you, do mm. I need to study graphs first? And there, so yeah. this like would the, be like the like need code graph. roadmap also is a little bit uh, similar, right? Like um, yeah, I think so. seen, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But yeah, I think I, that is like one way, but this will be yeah. like uh, back and forth also. Yeah, exactly. So mm. uh, I I just wanted to create like the list of sets, mm. basically like list of points. So you realize that okay. If I'm if I'm trying to prepare array, I need to understand that these are the five things that I'm also learning simultaneously. Right, right. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, this is just like for individuals' uh, personal understanding. So I, yeah. I thought yeah, I'll do that. I now. think this will be good. Otherwise, you sort of like in the problem, you go to the questions and like below that, there's like the type of things will also be there in each question. But yes, exactly. This will consolidate all of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe, yeah, yeah. So yeah, th this is, uh, yeah, even I'm also waiting to complete the DSA as quickly as possible. So now I really want to, because, yeah, I've, I've been a uh, solutions architect for like a couple of years. And now uh, 
I really I'm learning a lot of new things, a lot of cool stuff. Like how can you build more resilient systems and what are the actual problems you see on the job? Not just like the typical questions we see on the interview that hey, if I have to build a high availability, low latency system, how can I do that? Mm -hmm. Rather than yeah, explain that betterly in, in a better manner. So hopefully, yeah, in the future, yeah. I, I'll, I'll make I think I'm excited to see you in that because like one video I've seen, like, uh, like I think you're aware of this striver person on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. So like on something about his Google in experience or some interview experience, I think he got called and then they're like, uh, <clears throat> so when do you want uh, to have telephonic round? How much time you need to prepare? And he was like, I don't need time. I'm ready like that. I think that is like the level of mastery because like he has put so much content also has been doing yeah. breathing BSA thing. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and when I started uh, doing the content on lead code, I was really scared with interviews because I, I was every day I was encountering a new problem and realizing that, Hey, I don't know this. I don't know this. Yeah, yeah. And now, yeah. Uh, you get enough comfort that okay, yeah, this is this is something, yeah, I can make sense of it. But so I want to get, yeah, I really enjoy his his stuff, like uh, Striver, mm. yeah. So that's the goal for, and I think uh, the senior we go in uh, in terms of experience, experience, there would be a lot more emphasis on system design because that's mm, what yes, they yes. really want. They don't want us to go and build like uh databases and jdbc connections yeah they want to make yeah, sure that yeah. yeah yeah i think yeah that's nice to see that <laughs> so much yeah i'm excited to when you that will be a good milestone for you yeah hopefully completing One that day. is yeah <laughs> uh okay so and like actually like since some, some things when you're discussing wanted to mention like about syntax right so uh like that variation is also happening in companies so it is not at all standard. Some company, they'll just tell you directly in Google, uh, like in the chat itself, they'll put the question. They'll tell you yeah. like what will happen like that. And we have to just explain it in words. Some of them, like I was first first time, like I did some lead code preparation and then went to interview. Interview was like, okay, open your ID. I was like, what ID? I don't have an ID. <laughs> and I'm like panicking. <laughs> then I was like, okay, <laughs> Googling like online ID uh, something. Yeah. Because I didn't have JDK installed on my system. Yeah. Everything is doing lead code. Then some website came with like hundreds of ads, but I was like, okay, something opened. It was like so slow, but something input output was coming. Then I realized that uh, input also, I have to pass the input and get the output. I was like, what lead code gives me automatic input? Yeah. So I spent actual time defining an array. I had totally forgot because like, I'm coming from a little bit of time back into this, right? So yeah. just to give a 1D array, like you put curly brace to like pass the values. Yeah. I was yeah, putting yeah. square brackets. <laughs> like what else should I put? It's not working compilation error. Uh, then I was like getting embarrassed also. Like shit, it was some product of arrays question, that one. I was like, yeah. I know the solution, but I can't even I pass it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to how to run the solution <laughs> this this uh, IT. <laughs> Yeah. yeah yeah but like somehow i figured it out thankfully and after yeah. that thing i have sort of i set up intellij idea in my system and also like figured out like okay let me pass solutions and all and see so try to learn that because i think in google they they're not i don't think they run your code they ask you to dry run your code and you yeah, use in the google it's on, all on google docs so yes yeah not even mm -hmm. any, and uh yeah so i think with different companies it's different but yeah, yeah, most of the top tier companies I've seen, they rarely care about syntax. So mm. yeah, I don't think they they frequently ask for uh, ID because the thing is, they all most of the top tier companies I've also seen giving you coding assessments. Now I have yeah. my own opinions on coding assessments. I think they are like total ignorable thing because there is no legitimate way to verify that someone you didn't did that. that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. There are like 50 ways to cheat in coding assessments but i don't yeah. know why companies still keep on uh putting emphasis on doing that yeah. i mean even with that i couldn't clear some of them <laughs> like <laughs> chat gpt is not giving answer <laughs> then finally i had to teach chat gpt and all yeah. but yeah like so like in the coding assessment uh sometimes at least that they pass some test case uh 
but in some of them like one interview i had and the guy asked me some question and like it was in a hacker rank link but it is just for my coding only they gave me that input is not provided nothing and the input is like what kind of input i like yeah you decide if you want 2d array or like 1d array and i was like okay i'll keep it 1d and like finally that question i couldn't solve properly because i didn't know whether to use a array list or like an array because <laughs> i it was some scheduling kind of question yeah <laughs> it was just a mess so i'd say like uh, this one tried especially initial days try to you should be knowing how to solve things uh, giving some t- test input cases because you don't know what interview will come and it will okay. shatter your uh, level like anything because you would have solved some 20 top lead code questions easy lead code questions starters go there and then you can't even like code the hard code the input or pass uh, so that i would say and uh, and, and this growth that happened like after this for the next round like intellij idea i had installed everything and i was like i had practiced some and then in uh, beach me i was also studying how to run like uh, j unit and test cases and all in case they ask some test coverage thing so next interview they asked me to run uh, like open id i happily opened I- intellij idea yeah. <laughs> i'm running thing that's running some other java file because when you run the default thing it it's in the same project so it runs all the code compiles all the code <laughs> and i'm like i'm choosing this choosing this but error is coming back <laughs> happened so like five ten times then i was okay. like okay like, copy paste it back to online id <laughs> <laughs> then i was like why are you showing me <laughs> so <laughs> all the permutations have gone through <laughs> oh man that's that's way too funny <laughs> it's like i took like in installing the whole thing as like automatic syntaxing everything <laughs> and then finally yeah. it doesn't run so for the next question i wrote in the online id itself and then i spent another half an hour debugging what happened in intellij then i understood all your code needs to be compiled and in same project there are some things like it runs everything once so it was just yeah so try to keep something handy like some default thing either in intellij your own id or like some online id you trust and then like keep those things handy because you might not always be given a coder assessment link on the spot you know the funny thing is actually here it's slightly different experience i've okay. seen in north america mm-hmm. where usually yeah they they mention beforehand before the interview okay. or mm-hmm. it's like i have always built up a habit that whenever recruiter asks reaches out to me for scheduling the interview i ask that uh, hey what is it is it going to be behavioral system design or uh, technical and if they ask technical i i i specifically ask that uh, do i need to prepare something do how it's going to be what kind of questions are they going to ask is it going to be language specific or dsa specific and they also give that information as well so yeah mm. it's, it's pretty lenient in that regard like there are no yeah. sudden shocks that hey now you need to do that mm. like yeah. i think that's very good like so i yeah. interviewed with stripe but it was not yeah. sd role it was a techno functional role that they're very systematic about it. They told like, we'll be giving quarter pad or something. Yeah. And they told this, you can practice, get yourself accustomed and very seamless process. But I've seen other companies, like even good product-based companies, uh, like randomly do this pull up your own online ID kind of thing. And yeah. uh, the to be honest, like it's based on your luck, but not all recruiters are also aware. And they have like some standard thing template. They just send you like, you ask them like, yeah, yeah, these, these things you do prepare DSA, this thing, that thing. Interview me something out of the blue comes. I was preparing like hardcore for system design down. I'd created DSAs and all. And they told like, uh, like next time you need to clear this. I had like some five mock interviews on Pram, watched so many YouTube videos on like system design. I go into interview and the interviewer asked me on like, uh, another uh, coding kind of question so okay. it was a scheduling something and then i understood all the question was very polite then started then i was like actually i was informed this is going to be a system design down so i was preparing more for that then he he was like a senior manager something he cashed he was like yeah but i like to ask like some coding things also we'll get to that <laughs> I was like, okay now what i'll do i can't be like no i can't do this you told me like this and all so just uh figured out like it was not a very good this thing but some things i explained and all walked through my process 15 minutes are done and then he asked me like last 10 minutes five minutes system the same question uh so it was not that great of an experience so 
the thing is sometimes i've kept asking recruiters also they are clueless they i uh, even for one of my interviews i kept asking like hey what i need to prepare for this round and like i know from some of my friends that they ask lld java and like but she told something dbms or this thing one recruiter tells one thing one person tells another thing and like it's not like what they tell also sometimes so like i think in some more bigger companies they have a more better process with it but some of them even though company is very good to be honest many of the recruiters are like outsourced they are like contract workers yeah. and they don't do that much of a good job i uh, see yeah, yeah totally agree on that uh, so yeah always make sure that you are you are at least prepared on your end hmm. if some, there might be some curveballs coming on right so uh, the, it again goes back to now you have to do a lot of interviews then you will get accustomed to this all these things you cannot learn on your own like okay now we are explaining some things but once you experience like walk of shame in zoom call then you come back and like sort of study that prepare that and all yeah uh, that's for sure so like like if you just going through the interviews like different stages so dsa is like that then like companies like java specific companies uh like where java is important like there are lot of youtube channels and all uh, to go or some things i was referring to one thing called code decode so they have like some good uh, like on commonly asked java questions spring boot all of those things so referring to those learning from them and noting down questions chat gpt is awesome to learn content especially if it's not a very recent technology java and all is like lot of things i would think like okay let me message my friend to ask this then i'm like oh wait i can ask chat gpt and it explained also like almost like java and all it's pretty correct most of the time so that way like le- leverage that and uh, yeah i think yeah so those are some of the things you'll get to know as you are interviewing what type of things they ask like i think in python they are some uh, i forgot what's the thing like there are some standard questions in java there are like some standard things and all and as you interview you can like sort of improve that so that is how it will be and uh, yeah i think we went over dsa java then there is like lld and hld yeah oh uh, just one one more thing uh, mm. regarding behavioral questions so um, in especially north america there is a there is a big emphasis on behavioral portion that they really yeah. they spend dedicated time there are usually like maybe director or senior managers uh, specifically conducting those behavioral interviews going through all the questions related to like what is uh, your experience has been drilling you really down on what are the situations mm-hmm. you have faced and it's not like hypothetical scenario that where do you see yourself in 5 years it's mostly like how your last 5 years have been and what are sort of like the battle yeah. scars that you have earned so how do you like how is that culture in india number one and number two like how do you prepare yourself for that yeah so like in my experience like uh, like to be honest like uh, i've gone to last round for like at least four or five companies i think but those were like techno functional roles not specific to software development like that so i think and like the one i did get through i like you know i'm working there now so uh the questions are like um, so i only know about this i don't know about the other companies but like relevant to more of your experience past experience and they want to see like also like how you handle like some screw ups those kind of things what is like your outlook on this thing and all and i think mainly what they're looking for is like to identify if this guy is like serious about this job or he's just looking for counter offers or like you know they uh he's someone who like run away fast or something like that uh <clears throat> so i um like again it it depends more also on like what is your weak area because this mistake i did i got resume shortlisted in some good company i am thinking already wondering how i am going to do salary negotiations <laughs> i couldn't even clear the dsa round <laughs> so <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> so this question like maybe for some people it is sort of like that like don't put the cart before the horse like when we are getting there we can do that more but uh, like mostly like if you come that far like maybe it's mostly like uh, this valid thing only so only time you might get rejected is two three people are interviewing same role same time and that guy is little more of a culture fit like that uh, so usually the main kind of uh, yeah so i think th- those are things try to brush up on your resume something that i did was like <clears throat> uh, i was talking to some of my 
like colleagues from like my past companies and all and discussing with them what projects i worked on and uh what technologies we actually because some things i have forgotten and like i understood like some of the things they were improved in that uh company after i left like they migrated to uh cloud and then like pcf and things like that also like so getting to know so that i can i also know what's relevant and also i also remember like more emphasis on like what we have done and also getting to know what different people did in your company because sometimes you might be asked a question and maybe you don't know exactly from your personal experience but like your teammate or someone else you know in the same company did you can still project that and say that so uh like like this journey is not like a one time thing it's like as much as possible you need to keep absorbing and learning and also that's also something like surrounding yourself with people the type of content you consume also that matters it has a positive effect awesome yeah so <coughs> continuously if i have to summarize like try to stay relevant try to reach out to mm-hmm. more people to understand learn from their experiences and also maybe like build good stories based on the experiences you had many mm-hmm. times you you have gone through it but maybe it, it happened like 3 years ago and you don't remember so yeah try to try to go go ahead and uh, at least build those bullet points like maybe 10 20 bullet points about different yeah. scenarios and uh, uh, have those like scenarios ready that hey if, if you tell me a time when you had conflict with your manager so yeah back in the day i had faced the situation where i had to confront mm-hmm. and yeah so i think that that can become really helpful yeah and th- there's like this famous like framework also it's called star framework i think so how you answer is first we tell the situation <clears throat> then the task and then the i think action. uh action yeah action and then the final result so uh, just also if you google and see that's like some standard questions like conflict with manager let's say or something mistake happened because of you something like that and just take a day to like go through like in your past think about things compare the resume and work experience and just go through write some bullet points so that in the interview you're not like you know sitting and like trying to take things from there when nothing is there so uh, i think that will be good and this is something like you know if your interview is scheduled you can do this like last minute and all but like you know some of the other coding and system design you need like some more time to continuously practice i feel yeah exactly yeah. i think this is uh, behavioral mm. is like the easy and fun part of the interview yeah 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 uh, yeah for the behavioral interviews let me just share one thing i okay. actually did a course on behavioral interviews on uh, okay. free code camp for on the free code camp okay. that one so for that i created like 50 questions that could mm. be asked in like uh, behavioral questions so i'll i'll ping you this link it's like uh, all the important questions that you can think oh. of and if you don't yeah. you don't even want to think about the questions like these are basically the categories that the mm. questions will be on so this yeah. is so good and like so one thing i have noticed is like the people who are sort of cracking these like good companies they have some way they are studying in a way they are making these resources for themselves or they are putting it online and i yeah. think that is the way to study also if you just yeah, think like in my head i'll keep nothing will stay Yeah, actually, in in I, when I started preparing for uh, uh, top companies, I like even if I'm driving some place or I'm doing my groceries, and suddenly I remember that hey, this time I had near really nasty fight with my coworker, and then we <laughs> fixed it that way. I would just put it on my phone as as a note, okay. and I actually have a mm-hmm. note called like uh, feel good stories. So okay. I would just look at them before the interview. That oh oh yeah, these are the mm-hmm. things that I can I can speak about if they ask, and now. Uh, now they are just like part of uh, second nature so i, right. I can just go through mm. them but yeah you are right yeah. it's good to note down these things so you yeah you can recollect them when when they are really important yeah and after a couple of interviews you are sort of repeating some of the stories so right. you exactly. remember it easily yeah and they are not the same company so they won't tell like hey you already told me that so <laughs> it will be fine like exactly. so maybe like let's but let's we can go to like lld and high level design kind yeah so yeah. <clears throat> there is like machine coding rounds but i have not faced that and i think fewer companies have i've heard like in india atlassian i think asks that but like maybe if people are not familiar machine coding is when you're given a problem like uh, you need to build an application or something and from scratch and you're going to build it end to end like it needs to be running itself 
so what they do is they'll give you more time like 3 hours or something but that's how it is but like in that as common but low level design and uh, high level design those are like more common these things uh, so like little bit about low level design like how common is a low level design i think they call it object oriented design in like oh, yeah we have yeah we have we have some companies who do low level design questions and high level mm-hmm. design questions but it's yeah it's it's very rare it's as rigorous as in like at last and you mentioned that where you have to build mm-hmm. the entire end to end solution in like 3 hours and stuff like that mm-hmm. uh, I, very rarely i think plantier and maybe like a couple of other companies does that but that okay. too they previously let you know that and that too they yeah. will only do when they are seriously considering so it's not like they are going mm-hmm. to do that 10 Based candidates time, maybe yeah. like one or two mm-hmm. candidates they, they would do that Hmm. Yeah. yeah. So again, low level design is like it. It it is like basically different subjects that you're writing and semester exam for. That's how I felt because I would have like back to back exams and like I need to start studying beforehand itself. So low low level design, you need to go over things like your oops concepts, uh, your like uh, solid principles, and then like design patterns. So there are like lot of resources, but like. some of like the like in youtube itself you find like good resources i'd say like some of the things which are like good like good to watch i mean see also this refactoring guru their website is like a written in a very nice way like good illustrations for design patterns so that has been helpful so the main thing when you study design patterns uh, try to also correlate with like your previous company or your current experience where they have implemented what thing so something that's common is like um, single turn patterns like mostly we most of the company somewhere they would have used then like factory pattern also is more common then if there are more specific things like strategy pattern and all they like you've used you can once you talk with your people right for the other points these kind of things also you can discuss and that will be like useful for you because uh, companies also ask that like okay what did you use in your like last talk or something which pattern you used why didn't you use this like that and all so like get up to speed in that way and try to when you're learning videos and all try to also parallelly like write or like hand write things so you know also structure it so because i've seen that i was consuming a lot of content but not actually doing it writing it so i went sort of blank in like the interviews like i wrote all of the data members they're going to be like okay this is going to be the uh, user is going to be like this car is going to be like vehicle but i forgot like how i'm going to link or where to put the methods and all so that comes only if you sort of write and practice and if you can find some like buddies to like do some mock interviews with i did like a couple a couple of my friends help and uh, so this also goes back to like if you studied in good college with like motivated people or like in some network you found others for interviewing this will be good so same thing with pram right so i've connected with few folks who i am connected now on linkedin and even like on whatsapp and all like people who are sort of also in the interviewing phase so they like good match for you they also know this they also have some level of same uh, experience also so you can also tell like hey can we practice lld type also like i'm interviewing and all and mostly if they are also interviewing they'll also be happy to do they can also ask and it's like a back and forth thing so lld i would say like prepare in that way system design is uh, more similar um, but i don't know i feel like it's i'm not sure if it's little more easy but it's, it's a lot more open ended uh, the answers and also you can uh, you need to sort of get the main points and all i have not you know had that much experience like the one company i did that like i got into so uh, but then the thing is here it's more about how much you also consume so you need to know stuff like okay that's load balancers that's like kafka that's like read read replicas what do you do with like normalization sharding these things and you need to know at a high level you're not going to like the node is going to ask did you actually implement sharding in your database no it's like Okay, you know how it works. We need some short key, this thing and all. We know how like CDN works like that. So, uh, like there are like lot of free resources, roadmaps and all. If like people are willing to pay, I don't know how it is like in India, like with willing to pay. I guess like people, I know some people who pay for some of these online courses. Uh, there are websites like Educative.io and all. But uh, the I think the people who do that are like people who are sort of are coming from a good product based company or who have that this thing and they know that. they can land jobs with like good salaries but like people who are not or like making switch from like very low paying jobs maybe i'd not pressure them into like buying any of the paid courses there are a lot of good yeah no honestly content, i, I yeah. personally have yeah I, i personally have strong opinions on that 
uh, I'm a big believer in like free education, and especially mm-hmm. right right now, it, everything is on YouTube. You can find good courses. There are like few good channels. So number one, like freecodecamp.org, that can for any technology that you can imagine, you can find uh, courses on that from like top guys, like folks from Google or folks from Netflix, and they they actually mm-hmm. create and post those courses for free. A uh, second thing is charging for a course. Like honestly, like even for me, uh, when I started YouTube and I started doing all of these videos, uh, many of my friends and many of like a lot of people told me that hey, why don't you put your course on Udemy or why don't you put your course here or there? I was like, it doesn't feel good, man. If someone I know, yeah. I know how tough it can be for some people. Like, mm. I we are still very much privileged. That yeah. we did not have to go through, but imagine some person who rarely spent any, who rarely had any money, uh, mm. and completed his or her education, and then they have to take care of their family and take care of like ten people, and also at the same time try to find a job, and then you are going to tell me that mm. hey, go and pay like five hundred rupees or buy my course, and then I will show you the way. Come on, man. Yeah. And yeah. So that, that yeah, I. I would personally prefer that if there is like a free way to do that, mm. I think they should opt for that. If it's something very specific and yeah. very tough to do, yeah, maybe it makes sense to that to create a course and get monetary benefit out of it. Mm. But yeah, hopefully, think, uh, yeah, and actually, I think for IT interviews, most of the stuff exactly. you can find it on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So that's like we are not in like some. Specific engineering or like some medicine field or something. Yeah, exactly. But even right. in that, I know a lot of people study online. But for us, like yeah. almost everything is online. And yeah. like, oh yeah, also, exactly. Yeah, and like a lot of things we use are also like some open source thing also. So it is like very good for us. I think so. Like I'm someone who is like getting into monetizing thing. Like sometimes it is like like for the top mate thing. Like I put some charge so that I avoid like maybe some random people coming on this thing. But uh like for booking thing that's but a service, right? yeah, that's a, yeah, review, yeah yeah no reviewing resume that's a service that's not mm. yeah that's that's no and you you just showed that how what are the things you are going to look in the resume and what are the things yeah. you are going to do so that's mm. that's for sure a good thing yeah i'm, I'm talking about like i know a person like i, I don't want to name names yeah but i know a person who just literally went over like a a youtube course and just made his own version of it and put it on Udemy and Coursera. Yeah. And many people who just who didn't search enough and they're like, yeah, let me just check yeah. on Udemy. And it's like, man, yeah, yeah. Why are you? What what benefit you get, man? You may mm. make some something, but it's it's morally wrong. Yeah, yeah. like it is a little bit tricky. Also. Like I think there will be some courses which are actually genuinely good, but. The time you spend to make sure that it is good, by that time you can find like good free ones also. <laughs> because, like for me, uh, because yeah, and I I don't know what is the best way to approach it because r- roadmap like if I got the roadmap early, which some like if you pay for some of these things you get. Yeah. But thing is, you get into you start understanding which are the good courses only once you start like researching your own. Yeah, so exactly. it's sort of like like now on LinkedIn, if I follow, I know some like legit people like especially system design. This is Gauro GKS. Yeah, GKS, Gauro Sen. Yeah. Mm. So Gauro those Sen. are like like good ones. Like he's also affiliated probably with something. Like he has his own this thing also. But, but like he, even, a lot of stuff yeah. on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that like for me to find the guy, by the time I also found a lot of like good free resources itself. So I yeah, I think like yeah, people you can try to do like fix on like even a lot of the resources we are sharing like none of them like all of this can be taken advantage in a free way like uh, this is another github link where uh, it's like all of the most common system design questions they are there so this has like a lot of information and it's, like fully free so the l- system design the good thing is a lot of things repeats cdn you can apply for like most of the questions load balancer happens for everything so how that happens at a generic way they explain and also there are examples for specific questions so yeah, the, people can leverage cool. this also yeah. yeah yeah and like practice like whiteboarding if you are doing especially system design you can try to look at uh, some of the free tools which are there so i use this one called excalibur 
and that is like good for like writing down things and also like drawing some diagrams and uh, stuff. So especially if you're going into an interview, again, it should not be same ID issue will come here also. You'll be like some I don't know what whiteboard to use or like I'm not comfortable with like writing stuff and also try to practice this way. Uh, I think yeah. it'll get taken care if you do these prompt mock interviews. That's true. Like you know, the funny thing is uh, when you mention about that. Uh, I actually have uh, so because I do YouTube videos, so I know how to connect my iPad with uh, OBS and how to draw yeah. on my iPad, and then it shows on the screen and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So now I have made that practice that before every single interview, I just keep my iPad on the side. So if I have to explain uh, something, I so just I, I be yeah. like, yeah, let me let me just uh, share my screen and let me oh, just walk, walk you through the solution. So that actually. In a couple of instances after the interview, like uh, the interviewer told me that I really like that you explained it with this. So yeah. I didn't have to spend time visualizing it. And then we were mm -hmm. able to move forward. And that was like one of the reasons I got selected at one of the companies as well. So mm -hmm. yeah, many times the way you approach the the resources that are available to you. Yeah, it's all only going to add that. Ben, add that yeah. Ben, yeah. This was something even I wanted to do, but so I had an iPad, I got a like a refurbished Apple pencil and all. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I lost my back because my last company we have Mac. I only have Windows of my own personal. So to like No, link, I, I have like, I, I um, do it on Windows. I'll... But which uh, software do you use? Like it's Air server. So the thing is, is that, that there are there right? are actually or... three ways. There are actually three ways. One is like if you want to do it for free, I think there is like for you a a3 for you something like, I'll, I'll ping you the link okay on LinkedIn. okay okay yeah mm -hmm. or yeah so that's uh that's a free way uh i was doing that but then i thought uh maybe let me just pay for it once uh mm -hmm. so i can just connect it through wi-fi and i don't have to worry about like yeah um, and yeah so then i use a uh, windows air server so if you're mm -hmm. windows air mm -hmm. server you you get like 30 day free trial okay yeah it's in okay. the windows Windows Store, so you can just download it from there. Mm -hmm. and okay. Yeah, both both are good. And then there was like one more NDX, but that is not really good. So yeah, yeah. That, that's what that's <clears throat> and you can uh, use OBS to uh, share mm. the screen. To share yeah. the screen, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think yeah, I'll check this out. But like for people who don't have iPad and all, like just like you know, get comfortable with like Excali draw, yeah, like there are some other tools. Yeah, drawing with your mouse or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, that should be, be and especially we are not. Uh, uh, okay, so this is another thing because when you do DSCs, like like in your videos and all, like you up, approach your intuition, you explain it, right? So whiteboarding, that's like good, but like not everyone can do that. So this is like very important. Learn how to do explain your intuition in your ID. So if you are doing especially like two pointer approach and all, put your array and then put like okay this is my start end index and all it's yeah. moving like this and explain it even when you do dry runs it'll be easy so you should as much as possible you make it like easy for the interviewer to uh, understand it's like going to be good and in the end sometimes interviewers like finally what is there on your screen they look so if you have a lot of comments explaining stuff it'll give a good impression let's say even code and like you know execute so well or something then like okay i just put s equal to this or like some shit like fast fast names try to get it like more and that uh, always like gives a good impression exactly yeah i totally agree with that uh, so and you know the funny thing is actually google, that is one of the things google's google judges people, people right? yeah yeah because they they intentionally have google docs just for the interview mm. like they mm. want to see that how well they can explain with the least amount of resources available correct correct yeah that's a yeah <laughs> different ball yeah. game um Okay, so we did like I think high level design, then behavioral sort of did. Then like another thing also I wanted to touch up a little bit is salary negotiations. Yeah. Like how how has it been for you? Because like for me, it was like a very bad thing in the past and only recently it improved. You know, the thing is I uh so before I never used to negotiate salary, I was just like happy to get a job, but that was like the early good days when I was naive. And then I realized that yeah, I should be doing it for the sake of myself and the company's sake because if i'm compensated well uh, there is higher chance that i would stay there for longer so now mm. i i just be very direct and i be very open that hey, I, I have family to feed of course i like your culture i like your company i don't want you to have a bad deal and i don't want me to have that resentment 
so yeah. i do my research i check on levels.fi it's a great resource it has a lot mm. of like relevant latest information plus i uh, explain like many times this question used to be there that what is your previous compensation i know in india it's very tough to escape that because yeah. when they ask for salary slips, it's actually illegal over here in North America mm. to ask their salary. So if before I used to be like honest and hey, this is what I how much I'm making, and they would be like, oh, if you're making hundred thousand, we can offer you hundred and twenty thousand. I was like, yeah, that sounds good. It's a twenty percent gain. Now, now I'm like, that doesn't even that doesn't even matter how much I make. The yeah. reason I'm looking for a job is because I'm trying to make something better or yeah. uh, better, and then yeah. So I just and also like many times i have seen managers the hiring managers don't even they very rarely have that concern it's like the recruiters yeah. job They're to make sure that, yeah yeah, exactly. yeah so recruiters they always try to be sneaky and get those numbers from you and now, now i just be very direct i was like um i i'm not mentioning that how much i'm making i if they ask me that how how much is your current salary i'd be like how much are you offering for this role and they're like no yeah. no you first tell us what is your <laughs> oh. uh, uh, you tell me the range just not the specific number and they they tell me the range i was like yeah i can think about it and then maybe we'll, once we get to that level we will talk so let's just focus on the yeah yeah yeah, mm. yeah but so, now i'm doing very tough negotiations before yeah. uh, i did not used to do that <clears throat> so for me it's been journey and especially in india right like i told you yeah. the breadth of companies same day, I would have interviewed. Like, I'm not putting any numbers, like in in the other thing. Yeah, but, no, of course not. Like, of course. Uh, like some number I would have put, and then like some, like <clears throat> one company would have been like, uh, like directly, like, no, how can we offer this much? And then later, same day, some other company, I'm, like HR called, and then I tell some number, like even more than that, and they will be like, okay, okay, like that, and they're like going on. So <laughs> it's like what <laughs> that they are doing so much this thing for that much itself. And they also like recently only I started understanding like they asked for current and all right. I know and I have to end up saying, but I asked like, okay, can you first you know tell how much you're this thing? Because in my last company I was like low ball, so I don't want it to repeat. Like that's yeah. why I'm saying. Then these guys also extra sneaky. They're like, yeah, it depends on the band and this thing. I was like, okay, can you tell the bands? Then they divert like, so we have like software engineers, senior software engineers staff. I was like, no, no. Like, what is the salary range for each band? That I'm applying. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like, no, it depends on the project. Then I'm like, well, okay, for the project, I'm what applying. Project I'm, what am I going to be working? <laughs> then it's like, no, that depends on your, uh, how will you do the interviews? <laughs> You'll be allotted to different projects. Yeah. Then I was like, Okay, I'll tell you my current, but like then like my expectations, will it be based on that? Or like it's like okay. Then I'm like, no, no, it's not based on that. Then I tell my current and expectations, like, what you're asking for this much percentage, like how is that? That's not this thing and also these people do that. I've had like maybe it's my luck or something, only one company where I had like I told them this is like my expectation. Like they didn't even ask about this. It was like a good company, I feel. And like HR full discussion happened. Then I asked, like, hey, what is this thing? Because again, I didn't want to waste my time or I was sort of like uh, sure about like where I'm going and all. Then they were like, uh, oh, what do you have in mind? And I was like, uh, you know, just want to make sure what is it. Like, I don't lowball. Then she itself told, and she was like telling way more than I was <laughs> planning to quote. Yeah. So, and she didn't ask me also about like my current and also, but that is like very few companies in India. Yeah, you and know, the so, funny thing is the current company that I just got hired at uh, mm -hmm. during these salary negotiations, like a, a, once we reached to that level, uh, I just told them that my mentor actually suggested me to come to this one. So I keep him in really high regards. Uh, plus, it's like a movie theater company. I, li I love watching movies. So that that's yeah. that. And I was like, Did you show your Zoom background? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, the the posts are from there. Okay, yeah, okay. After, after yeah, yeah. yeah. So no, okay. the thing is, and then uh, I was like, uh, I told them that uh, you, I leave it up to your discretion. Uh, hmm. I just because I don't want to build that resentment, and I, I yeah, yeah. told them honestly that I I'm very honestly telling you I don't want to play this game of uh, cat and mouse. Because I genuinely, <laughs> yeah, I, I genuinely had good experience with uh, like the hiring manager. It's like mm -hmm. I, I felt really, really well. 
So and I I told them that I I have been battered with like a couple of layoffs and whatnot. The market is it is what it is. Yeah. They actually ask me for that. Okay, just they very genuinely they ask me to tell me what is your expectation. I told them that mm. if this is this is the number we are able to meet, we are okay. It's mm. like yeah, let me speak with the hiring manager on what mm. you just said to me. Or like the whole mm-hmm. discussion point, mm-hmm. and uh, he discussed with the like my current manager, right. and they actually exceeded that as well. My expectation, oh, they're okay. like, yeah, no, mm-hmm. let us make sure that we we have, we don't want to screw him over. We yeah. we really wants to uh, start the relation on on a good note. So yeah, some mm-hmm. companies would definitely do that, and some yeah. sneaky ones you will you will figure it out very early that they're trying yeah. to sneaky. Yeah. So like very tied in with this is like discussing your salaries. With people and also, so I was coming from a perspective where I will not ask anyone my uh, their salary and I will not tell anyone my salary. And like, what happened is because of that, I sort of got lowballed in my like last company this thing and what. So even the person who referred me, she asked me how much are they offering so that she could tell me. I was like yeah. some saying that's like no notes. Okay, I also won't ask you. Also <laughs> not ask. I'm getting some twenty five percentage hike, so it is yeah. fine. But she was like, "No, no, you tell me like this thing." Yeah. Like, "No, no, it's fine." Then I find find out that like juniors are like uh, like being hired with like higher pay and all like me. That you know, like at my very first company I used to work with, there were some people who got hired like one level below me, who to whom I was actually training them, and I was getting paid less than them. I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> so it's like common. This has happened. Like. On LinkedIn, like some people have like reached out asking about the company and all, like juniors, and they'll be like, uh, like in Tamil, Anna and also like, Anna is yeah. we are getting this offer letter, this much CTC, is it fine? Then like we with my peers, it like that guy is getting more than what we are getting <laughs> CTC, <laughs> and she's asking, is it fine? <laughs> yeah, so exactly. This happens, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so. I like so right now. I've devised like some policy around this. So what I feel is like I will discuss my salary with someone if I know maybe they're getting paid more and that there is some benefit with me discussing also. So I will not go and tell my salary to someone I know is earning very less. Like I don't want to make them depressed or like jealous or get bad feelings to it. Especially like people you interact with very closely, not in work but outside. So that you need to think about it. But in the workplace, I think. If you can talk to people, and Feed that will give you perspective. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Because like last company, me, I had someone who was earning like a lot more, and then he was like actually telling, "Ha, I'm getting this much," and then asking me. I was like, "No, no, no, I won't tell. I won't tell." But then he knows how much my colleagues get and all, so he has an idea. Then later, when I put my paper, then I decided that now anyway, I'm leaving. I'll find out everyone <laughs> before I leave. So yeah. the thing is, people are comfortable telling their salary once you tell your salary, because yeah. now you are like Wallace and Jack Court. Like you are not like getting unfair advantage, right? You know, yeah, like, you know, you know my secret. I know your secret. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So like, keep it confidential. Don't find out from here and then tell, "Ha, this guy is getting this much." Yeah. So don't do that. But like, then you get a better idea because I know people who are like slogging in the company who are are going to earn so much more than me, but they're like not that much difference. I was like. You did all this work for like only this much difference or something, and and then like me talking to people outside company also because like I know market is down, but like not all companies are down, not all companies are like laying off, not all companies are giving like single digit hikes and all. So that talking to others also helps. So and that in some ways once you're in little bit of a good space, it motivates you also. Key okay, I need to want to achieve like this thing, or you might have something like I want to buy this or something like. Not saying for people who have like big commitments, but like it also helps. Like, see, my peers or some people are like earning this much now, so it is achievable. It's not like some far off thing. So that way, it helped me, and especially salary negotiations, like this glass door and like like thing you were mentioning levels and also glass doors. Like, I've used it more. I think there's fishball also, but like you can get especially the bigger companies. Uh, Most of them they have. They'll put like people have put like software engineers earning this much, yeah. senior software that much, and then you can also like talk if you have some people. Maybe don't directly ask their salary, but say like you can tell I'm earning this much. I'm thinking to quote this much, or what do you think I can quote for? Like you no, know, ask them what range you can quote for. Not asking their salary, but 
indirectly sort of asking because you are asking their experience how much i can code for and all so Opening. that way yeah you don't low ball yourself and like tell the recruiter also directly ki like you mentioned like same thing i had also done like i'm quoting this much if you compare with my last ctc it is like so much percentage whatever but like one thing i think i was not paid market rate thing and second thing i'm looking for like a long term career thing i don't want to join and then think that okay i could have you know gotten a better offer something like that so i yeah, think exactly. if we have that yeah that that and also that that resentment builds up with with mm. time if you are being low balled at some company you are going to leave that in like 6 to 8 months so if you just establish mm. that that hey why, why don't we just come to an agreeable number that yeah. where we both are happy so there is more chances that i would stay here for longer and mm. uh, you know the funny thing is over here like in some states in us and some places in canada they put passed on laws that do you have to post like salary range when you post the jobs yeah yeah yes yes but mm. they put salary range from like 80000 to 600000 it's like Can't all hold of us <laughs> yeah oh, yeah yeah that's work around but yeah uh, so i think with regards to like so bigger but these kind of things will happen only in little more established tech companies but some of the others where it might still offer you like good this things i think the way to go about is like you need counter offers of course so you get an offer don't be like ha ah, okay now i'm set like apply to other places because then they'll improve your salary because otherwise it might just be based on your past but now if you have a counter offer and they are in need of a candidate they will uh, improve so this is something especially in your notice period you should do i feel don't stop with like a uh, one company i got so i'm set let me enjoy my notice period and all i th- i think enjoying you can do after you join the company during your uh, starting and all but like <clears throat> try to do that and get counter offers and increase your salary like a lot of my peers they did that like especially people not from like uh, tier 1 colleges and all like they have had to do a lot of counter offers to like increase their salary a lot like in during a jump uh yeah i think uh, that also i would say um yeah <clears throat> if uh, i think like in so we covered like the different reviews still hiring these things yeah yeah For sure, I think. I, yeah, I think. I think we covered most of the topics. Uh, you think I think we are missing yeah, and like and one a re- rejection thing also. Maybe I'll say a little more. So, uh, yeah, like rejection is like horrible. So, like even like the first unfortunately email itself is bad, but then once you start interviewing and you start like uh, picturing yourself in that company and all eating the perks from that company, and then you get rejected. and especially if in the hiring round you get rejected it's like bad so like just know that it is like normal and like everyone even in like best companies they are going through like lot of rejections before they get it and if you need like take one day off like from studying or whatever this thing like relax whatever and then restart the next day so uh, that that's like this uh, famous movie in india 12th fail uh, i'm not sure if you've seen movie. yeah that's right yeah so <clears throat> that is yeah that was like highly motivating for all of this like restart yeah. studying and preparation kind so think of it that way and <clears throat> like depending on your type of this thing like i think this should be like a longer term goal like not something like in two weeks i'm going to achieve a job shift thing it should be like a few months thing or like a year long road map and continuously you need to keep improving and you'll get like the rewards will be there so a little bit of consistency if you can do like i wouldn't say i was doing it consistently but the times i did consistently was when i had interview scheduled so always have that applying thing and have some interview schedule schedule so that you also don't slack off on your preparations <clears throat> and like take notes write down things if you can like teach to others do it with like other buddies or like use some of these like three uh, <clears throat> mock interview platforms and all and i think that will like help you in this like journey of course yeah, i totally agreed and <clears throat> uh, with rejections yeah a couple of times during like first couple of rejections you will feel bad and you will feel hurt yeah but then eventually by the end by the end when you actually do get the job you are now completely rejection proof you are like yeah, even if the day before joining if they ask you that we are not hiring you you wouldn't yeah you wouldn't be as sad as you were during yeah. your first rejection so it's 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 you have to learn the hard way but yeah. you will Yeah, I think everyone is going to experience that. That's for sure. So, yeah. 
so the earlier and, you feel that this is normal yeah, yeah. the better the, the better it is for you like i have gone through those many interviews where i know like it's going to be bad it's some service space i know they last something on java i don't answer but i still like make a point to show up uh it's okay what are you coming to just sit through that and yeah it is like helpful and so another thing that i did <laughs> is like i would apply to companies even if i'm not planning to join them so for example it's in a city that i don't want to join to or it's in let's say like i'm not wanting to work in a service space company so i was applying there also mainly for the free mock interview experience yeah so i think it's a totally free thing and like why not why not take advantage of it and and there will be a lot of parallels also like as, like it might be asked in the company that you want to join in also so try to leverage all of those things and like like again it's like numbers game so utilize everything and all of these like takes like i think even if people are watching this there's so much good content here like so many things you've shared so they can like sort of note down some of these things as action items and like start working on them some of the resources we shared also yeah, hopefully. hopefully yeah i think i think in this discussion we went over the entire interview prep journey Life i think this is, <laughs> this is something this would this is something that it would probably take like 3 to 6 months for someone to figure it out on their own mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. this for sure this is a lot of inf- and this is information that if i had known before i would have done much better decisions like i had to figure this Same. the hard way yeah. and every single level yeah i would start doing lead code and then realize oh i need to do system design as well. oh i need <laughs> to do this as well i need to do the yeah well. i need these stories so yeah with every rejection uh, i learn every new thing basically mm-hmm. yeah yeah uh i don't know i think i we covered most of the stuff but i'm sure after we finish the call i remember like there are most of my hot to yeah no about. if if you feel if you feel that we might there might be some stuff we might have missed we can do like some follow up mock um hmm. and like we can just go over and we can also pre plan that beforehand and uh, yeah. like ask people to post their questions as well so we can include those and yeah uh yeah i think just two things i wanted to ask you like um <clears throat> so one thing is like have you like used any like books and all in your journey like for like related right, to right here right below this okay. elephant is sitting <laughs> uh, okay okay yeah oh you have okay kaki recording tree yeah in the yeah. yeah, book that is the only yeah. book i have i referred ever yeah but mm. now i think even the tracking <clears throat> the coding interview is also getting slightly obsolete because now the interviews are getting like slightly more harder and harder so mm. yeah but still i would have recommend this book, book. Now, so yeah. Mm. yeah i think it's a good like lot of people recommended and yeah. it's it's quite relevant um so actually like another thing also wanted to say like uh, <clears throat> so i am someone in youtube also like from many years back so i used to keep watching software engineer day in life this thing that thing and all so but like us based when i am in india now but like only like this year or like few months back when i realized that the process is sort of same in like the big tech companies in india or in the us it there is no discrimination or they have sort of same process so even like the stuff that you see like okay maybe if like people from here they do masters abroad and then get into these things right like it's actually possible here itself you have to put like I think people are putting same amount of effort. It says that if you fly to another country, you're in like more serious situation to not chill. You act have to figure it out, or else like you know you'll you need to come back or like you've wasted a lot of money and all. So you take it more seriously. But you can sort of achieve like similar things, similar company, uh, similar lifestyle in India itself. So I think that that was like a big eye opener thing for me because I thought like okay, Google and these other companies over there, that's like different here, like. I was not even thinking about that, but now I'm finding out a lot of people similar to me are also working in these companies. So it's not like too over the top and all. Uh, that is yeah something I wanted to share also for like people who because a lot of Indians also we consume content from outside, right? So exactly <clears throat> like the thing is so yeah uh, even I I had the stigma before I came over here and then realized it's just the same thing. <laughs> as is hardly yeah. any difference and even now when i do come back to india i actually feel india is doing much better in many digital <laughs> items in terms of digital digitalization yeah. yeah india is on much much better path 
so yeah. and yeah in, in terms of uh, so number one i don't think any company cares about education in north america that's for sure uh, no one has ever asked me that what i have studied in university like mm. i have bachelor's or masters they they don't even ask mm. that question so that that's number one thing uh, number two uh, i think the important part is the amount of study is going to remain the same it's always going to be like 6 to 8 months long process if yeah. you are targeting like the top tier companies maybe like uh, during that time you can start clearing interviews in like slightly moderate companies Better, yes. but yeah. but, yeah. but yeah, i think it's it's same both ways i think in terms of uh, yeah few things i think india is more brutal maybe things like uh, work culture and because mm. there are uh, yeah there are like lot more competition over there so i i mm. feel maybe but on the india indian side second thing is you there are lot more resources very easily available as well like you can reach mm. out to your colleagues your college friends your school friends um ask questions even your work colleagues they sort of become like your family and then you can yeah, uh, yeah. Have, yeah i think over here it's much more like still tends to be on the professional side, side of things mm. there are yeah, there are some pros and cons there are some cons, good yeah. and bad but yeah uh, in terms of <clears throat> standard of living if you are making good money i don't think there is any better place than india to live i have lived yeah. in, i have lived in all three places like uh, i've been to stay us i have lived in canada and i have al- also lived in india so if you have good <laughs> yeah because you are with your family you are yeah. getting enjoying all the benefits it's nice weather you are not stuck in like minus 40 degree weather so <laughs> yeah there are, there are yeah of course there are some pros and uh, also mm-hmm. over here here is also it's nice life but initially in the first few years there is a lot of struggle because you mm-hmm. it's a new country new place you are away from home you miss home you feel homesick and there are a lot of things that you have to compromise so yeah Yeah. like we are sort of like in terms of lifestyle what you can get it is sort of coming there and the main advantage is you're getting that at a very lesser cost thing so <clears throat> like whatever like amenities you are getting like let's say abroad in the us or canada we are sort of getting that in our home and other places but like at uh, le- some of things living expenses like pay lesser thing but yeah, yeah like you might yeah it's it's a totally different thing but it it is little hard another thing is especially people in the us who go for masters like getting that h1 b also is like another headache like yeah you are really yeah. really tough for mm-hmm. the so in the uh, i i have worked with many people who were actually in us for like 10 12 years and then mm-hmm. they couldn't get the h1 b approval or extension so they right. they moved to canada they are like yeah, at least i would yeah, get yeah. my immigration over here yeah mm mm-hmm. yeah so anyway yeah okay so i think maybe last thing is sort of like um i we know like how your preparation is like before you get the job and before you got the job especially like uh like uh, like you know you're not working that time so it's like more dedicated and all so what how is your preparation or like your learning and stuff like your weekly pattern or daily pattern now that you have a job which you like also it's pays good also now the thing is i don't even prepare for the interviews i just prepare for my videos so <laughs> yeah yeah i try to good way. yeah i try to do the best i could in my video and mm. you only learn something profoundly if you can teach others so exactly that, yeah. that the advice my wife gave was actually really yeah really deep because i i don't know yes yeah yeah I, because i i sort of now feel that i i now i don't even prepare for any interviews at all mm-hmm. because i have in order to in order to if you have to do one lead code problem you can probably do it in like 15 20 minutes or if you see the solution like if you spend like maybe half an hour or 45 minutes you would mm-hmm. ultimately see the solution and realize that okay this is what you were doing wrong yeah in my case i'm first trying to understand the problem solving the problem and then realizing that how am i going to make a uh, video on that so that others mm. can understand easily and mm. uh, yeah i always presume that the other person does not know anything about tech so how can that right, person right. also understand that yeah so mm. th- in order to do that process like after uh, I, i have what like 280 290 videos something like that 
so after this much time yeah i think uh, i have covered like decent chunk of uh, yeah. that portion that now i don't spend time on uh, prepping for the interviews but mm. yeah uh, i would still say that uh, if you are actually if you are right now thinking about getting a, getting into a new job make like just just like you said make a 6 months to a year plan and mm. uh, start establishing that okay this is what i need to complete Th- these are the questions and along the whole way start giving keep on giving interviews don't be like okay yeah. I, po- i gave myself 12 months so i will start interviewing in 2025 so don't don't do mm. that. yeah uh yeah awesome box i think yeah we've sort of covered some of the things you wanted to do <clears throat> yeah i think yeah, I, yeah now it's almost like 3 am so no oh, no go to sleep <laughs> yeah are you for keeping your that was yeah, good no what is it really fun i'm like hearing the same voice and same video but it is like back and forth for the first time otherwise it's only me watching your videos <laughs> no for sure i'm i'm open to having like these conversations because i genuinely find it's helpful to a lot of people so mm. if we you can find some other interesting topics or anything else you feel like we can talk about i would always be open open yeah. to that yeah definitely like uh, yeah i think you know i think i'll revive my podcast thing like i have not touched it in like one or two years so yeah sure. i'd love to talk talk to you yes Okay yeah. let's plan something on that as well yeah all right path then also okay. talking yeah. to you it was pleasure speaking with you uh, all yeah. the links that you sent uh, they are currently in the live stream i'll mm. copy them and post them in the description of this video as well so okay. or uh, you, you know uh, is it okay to just like write one sentence and just send me the links so i can just yeah yeah i think you know copy i'll maybe make it little better format right? yeah exactly yeah just make it like exactly what they are for and i'll just post that in the or i or uh, you can comment it below this uh, video and i'll pin your comment so it will always st- stay on okay the yeah uh, okay it would make more sense yeah okay yeah let's do that i think i've I'll just copy the ones from the chat also yeah sure yeah b- by the way i think the ones on the chat i also put them on the youtube live video so okay mm. yeah i'll see them there so Oops. yeah thanks a lot and Thank thanks you. everyone for watching the uh, watching it on youtube so hope they find some something meaningful out of it all right take care then have a good night <laughs> so thanks man <laughs> bye yeah bye bye bye